Hey, what is up, everybody? Welcome to Game Day here at Heavy Cardboard. Teach, play, and discuss medium and heavy strategy board games, war games, 18xx. I am your host today, Edward Euler. Happy to be joined just with y'all, the herd, the peanut gallery, because solo game day here. Uh, looking forward to this one. I see that the designer has joined us, and what game are we talking about? It isn't back here because it's actually a Ziploc game, and this is Space Inf... Space Infantry Federation, designed by Nathan Hansen and published by Lock and Load Publishing. So welcome everybody watching live around the world as well as after the fact. Like I said, I saw that Nathan uh, is in chat with us today, so good, yay. Nice to have Nathan here, which will be good because there will probably be the occasional question that will come up. Uh, what this is, is essentially, if you're familiar, if you're a war gamer, I assume you're going to be familiar with the States of Siege series. This is not that series, but it's kind of, it will be reminiscent of that series provided that, that you're familiar with it. And basically it's a whole, it's a tower defense in a lot of ways. Um, so keep that in mind, but it has some really, really cool things going for it. I will say this, Nathan, close your ears for this or, or don't as it is. The rule book's terrible, really bad. But that's job security for me so that I can help bring everything forward for y'all. I'm just not a really big fan of the rule book, but I don't want that to dissuade folks because once you understand uh, how the mechanisms of this game works, it's going to flow super, super quick, super easy. Uh, so yeah, I'm excited about this one. I hope that y'all are as well. Now, what I am going to do a little bit different than what I do normally on the solo playthroughs is I am going to go through a lot, if not all, of the setup in this game and describe some things in detail. Uh, so it's going to be kind of a setup slash overview of what it is we're going to be doing. And then we're just going to roll into the game. Now, a lot of the things that I'm going to be doing through the game. I'm going to be referencing the rule book because the player aid actually has you reference the rule book for the steps, but it becomes somewhat intuitive. However, it's all, uh, it's all symbols and pictures. With that said, uh, there, there's, there's very little writing on the board and on any of the boards. So keep that in mind. So until it becomes memory, we're going to be referencing things here in the rule book. But other than that, I'm genuinely looking forward to this one, which is saying something because I haven't been a huge fan of the States, uh, States of Siege series, but this one, I'm looking forward to it. So without further ado, if y'all are ready, I'm ready. Let's get into it. Now, I am not going to bring the camera down. I'm not going to bring, uh, oh, shoot. Let's scoot that over a hair. Chat. Ah. Let's get that over. There we go. That's better. All right. So what is it y'all are looking at here? Well, the game essentially is five different boards. You only see four on the screen because the fourth one is a reference. I may uh, show y'all this, zoom in on it as reference, uh, as needed, et cetera, et cetera. But just know that this one's going to stay off camera because it's reference and that's all you need to know about that. All right. All right. So, uh, with that said, the game obviously is four boards, as you can see here. The first board, and I would argue these are the two main boards. Even though you have the map and everything else that, uh, like, the, the, the graphics as far as the actual what we're going to be doing is going to be taking place on this board, I kind of feel like the main map here is a second, secondary, if not tertiary, uh, board. The two main boards are this one and this one. And then the last one is the event board. Whenever we have events that come into play, we'll be using the event board. But other than that, that's, that's very much the fourth uh, board, if you will. But um, let's go ahead and talk about the event board, actually, to go ahead and start out with. Now, the event board, it's very simple for setup. There are seven Tokens, as you can see right there, and I'm going to have to adjust this since I move things a little bit. 
There we go. So we have the event board up there at the, and you have seven event tokens. You're gonna shuffle those up and as things come up, they're going to come into play. Past that, we don't need to talk about that. That's the event board. That's easy enough, all right? Now, even though it is, you know, the secondary or tertiary uh, main board, we're gonna talk about this board a little bit next and as far as setup, all right? There are five, enemies in this game. We are the Soul Federation or the Federation, we're Earth, right? Um, and that's represented as you can see here, all right? Here's our first flagship right there and uh, here in Soul, all right? There are fa five bad guys in this game or five enemies in this game. And I apologize for pronunciations. Hopefully these folks watching this will not uh, be too terribly upset if I mispronounce uh, some of them, but uh, Synthonians, which are the yellow bad guys, there are three different levels of ships. Uh, there are scouts, raiders, and call them uh, invasion fleets here, all right? So single ship, dual ship, triple ship, and that's just going to be referenced whenever we have things that come into play. You have their three ships lined up here, and then they each have uh, five, or is it six? It's six technologies for each of the different factions. So we have the Synthodians, which are going to come into play with these spots over here and then this part over there, all right? Then down below that, you have the Flesh Eaters. Again, you have their three ships, you have their technologies, they're going to be here and they're going to be coming in towards Earth this direction, whereas the Synthodians will be coming that way. The mercenaries or the mercs, they have a level one and two level two ships. Notice they do not have any flagships or invasion fleets there, but they do have their technologies. They're going to be coming in from this way and then kind of coming in that way. One thing I do want to point out, because this has caused some confusion for folks, this planet here, which is going to be one of the uh, main goals of our game, this is in the yellow system, in the Synthonian system. It was an unfortunate choice of a blue planet because it makes people think that the mercs have something to do with it. They don't, it just happened, it's just flavor. So it's just a big yellow planet, think of it that way, all right? Then, moving over to the right-hand side, you have the mutants. So again, they have their three ships, their technologies here, they'll be coming in from this direction. And then over in the bottom right, you have the cyborgs. Again, their three ships, their technologies coming in from this direction. So those are the five bad guys. So you put their ships out, far right will be their scout, then raider, and then invasion fleet as, as it goes. And then you just shuffle up their six technologies and you get it ready. So boom, done. And you put one of our available ships right here in Seoul. All right, so there's set up for that. Hey Jess, love of my life. Welcome, glad, glad you can make it. All right. So next, we're gonna talk about one of the two main boards up here, okay? And I apparently can't hit a button. So there we go. The politics area of the board. What this is, we are going to be at war with various factions, but the factions may be at war against one another as well, and that's what this represents. You have the four main factions, the Synthonians, you have the mutants, the cyborgs, and the flesh eaters, and then sort of the mercs up here. Notice the symbols up here, all right? But for setup, what you have are these little markers that are going to uh, symbolize where everything starts. Everything starts very neutral. So all of these uh, little markers start in the center, so nobody is at war. So the flesh eaters and the synthonians are neutral to one another. These uh, flesh eaters and the cyborgs are neutral to one another, etc., etc. okay? And we'll talk about the Merc stuff when that comes into play up here, but we're not gonna cover it right now. What pertains to us specifically here though, is this little group right here in the middle. And what that is, is our losses. So um, a lot like the Vietnam War, uh, as losses pile up, um, our will to fight and our stability deteriorates. So in other words, as we take losses, as we lose battles, knock on wood, hopefully we don't, but if we do, 
We lose the first, uh, we have one loss, okay, two loss, okay. Anytime we have to go past that, that then affects our stability and our stability will then drop. And then this will reset and then if it climbs back up, bing, that will drop. If our stability ever reaches zero, we lose the game. That's gonna be one of the triggers for the end of the game. In addition to that, we as humans like to explore. So there's going to be a desire to go out and explore. But in this case, that exploration is represented by colonizing and colonizing the various planets. So as this goes up, boom, if it goes up any higher, you guessed it, our stability will drop and then this will reset, et cetera, et cetera. All right, so that is going to be the politics board. So whenever we have things that tie in with politics between the factions, as well as our loss of stability and desire, it's going to come into play for that one. Then there's the war effort. And the war effort is how the other factions, how we, where we stand with the other factions, whereas politics up here is how they are against one another. This is how we are against all of the factions. So again, the, it starts out, you can see the little spots right here. We start out with our markers. Everybody's at peace. We're at peace with everybody except the mercs. The mercs are at war with us all the time. All right? So... So be it, that's where it starts. We'll cross that bridge when we get there, all right? But the important thing to note on this is going to be these little white bars over here. And the reason those are the important thing is because this is going to be an activation slash chip pull game. So as we pull chits and activate, it's going to show us who's going to be activating, which of the various factions will be activating, the AI, if you will. And this is going to tell you which are the available actions that actually activate. You ignore everything else. So we're at peace with everybody that, that the mercs. So if they pull one of, if we pull one of these symbols down here and we're at peace, we just move it aside. We don't have to worry about it. But as things advance in the wrong direction and we, well, they get to activate and do more bad things for us. Okay. So, but as it is, you have the markers there and then you have additional markers that may come into play throughout the game. We'll cover that when we do, uh, when we get there. That makes sense? Good? All right. And then there is the core of the game. Not so much the research technologies, but hey, cool little bonus or benefits that we can research. They'll go here when, when we get there. But the core of the game, as I mentioned, is going to be this chip pull activation track the, right here. All right. And I want to bring your attention to a few of these different chits. Now the symbols and everything on them don't really matter for right now. The important things to point out is in the top right hand corner, you see that there are different little heads up there, different colors, red, hardest, yellow, moderate, green, easiest. That's difficulty level. So you put in a cup all of the chits that have your chosen difficulty in the cup. So we chose middle of the road. We're not going to choose easy. It's heavy cardboard. Come on now. So basically what that means is there are four chits that have been removed from the game that are green only, but everything else is in the cup. All right. Easy enough. So we're going to draw chits as we go along. Okay. This symbol up here in the top left corner means universal. That's everybody, all the bad guys. Okay. This symbol up here in the top left hand corner is specific to a faction. In this case, that's going to be the mercenaries. Okay, cool. And that symbol over there, or more importantly, whenever you see kind of this scent sign with the two lines through it, that means that's going to be us. And this is where we get to start taking our turn. So we're going to continue drawing chits, da 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 da, da and activating against uh, the bad guys doing stuff until we get to one of these. When we get to one of these, we get to take our turn. Okay? So that symbol represents us, and that symbol also kind of represents us. But enough about that. Those go back into the kitty. We'll talk about that more here in a little bit. But as you can see, that board is now set up. All right? All right, so next, and arguably equally as important in main board, if you will, as the politics slash war effort slash activation board, is going to be our research and resource board over here. Now, the research board part of it isn't going to come into play too terribly early. 
all right? But it's there and we'll be able to advance technologies and hopefully eventually research them to where, hey, it's going to get, make our life a little bit easier, all right? But moving on down from there, is going to be one of the key things in the game, and that is our locked assets. Our locked assets are going to be the bases that we can uh, establish or colonize, if you will, on the planets. That's going to be our victory condition. I'll get into that more in a little bit. But as we colonize, as we either call it colonize, build, establish, whatever, out on the planets, these bases, it's going to then unlock these things over here. So you'll notice over here in the left, we have our starting resource pool. Our starting resource pool has two or three chits of the six different resources in the game. And let me see if I can do this from memory, all right? We have our build resource right here. We have our movement or our fuel or whatever you wanna call this, that's going to be the green one. Then we have our morale, which is going to allow us to do uh, things a little bit more efficiently. Then we have our diplomacy, which are the flags. Then we have our espionage or intrigue. Hmm. Over here, the little kind of purple eye. And then we have our research in the little beaker. Me, 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 me. But as we establish these bases, it's going to unlock everything that's to the right of it. So it's going to unlock some, uh, a couple of resources. So all of the, whatever, uh, if we were to establish this base, we would take these resources, there's two builds, put them over here. They're now available for us to be able to uh, uh, acquire those later on. Then our, um, our ship here and a special, or one of our uh, uh, technologies, or that we can research becomes unlocked. So what that what happens? This ship will then come down here into our unbuilt assets, meaning it can be built, it unlocks for us to be able to build with a build uh, action, more on that later. And then our technology here will then come over up to here and it's going to be able to possibly be researched as we go along. Okay, the exception to that is going to be this base right here, which is a warp base. This one has to be built, and then this has to be researched, so this will actually go up there. Then after it's researched, then it can be built on a different planet. Then it unlocks a warp drive, some allies, and some uber awesome technologies. But that's kind of the long game, right? All right, our unbuilt assets are things that we can build whenever we have these uh, build resources available to us. So chips, which there are none other than the one that's already on the board right now. Soul defense. So I told you, this is a tower defense game. The bad guys are going to come in and try and take over Earth. If they do, we lose. This is going to help Earth defend itself. So building that would be good. And mines, they're a terrible thing to waste. Bad joke, but we can also build mines more on those when it comes into play. And then arguably the most important part of the game outside of the activation queue is our resource track and our stored resources. Now, our stored resources are resources that we have at our disposal when it's our turn to take a turn. We have five of them at most, possibly more that will come into play as the game goes along but we have five. These are one-time use, and then after we use our stored resources, we're going to move them back into the resource pool, then hopefully they'll come back out on the resource track and eventually become available again for us. But as it is, the beginning of the game, we have five, and these are one-time use. You use them, and then they either, one of three things will happen. We will spend them. If we spend them, they go back into the pool to be used again. We will deploy them, meaning they'll go somewhere out on one of the available boards out here and possibly help us out uh, with certain things that we'll cover as we go along. Or the third thing, which is completely, uh, I, I forget the exact term, sacrifice, that's it. And it's permanently out of the game because there's only a finite amount of each of these resources, and as you unlock them, you get more. So if you're sacrificing, you're permanently getting rid of them, that's gonna be a tough decision. But obviously, when you do that, you get a pretty cool benefit for them. But I digress. We have five of them to start. You are allowed to choose any mix 
of these five. However, Nathan choose or suggests that, hey, for your first couple games, choose one of each of the five, call them basic resources, which is what those are. So that's what we've done. All right. The last thing about setup that we have not done yet is we're going to roll five dice. By the way, the game doesn't come with dice because it comes in a Ziploc. So you need five dice, six-sided dice. They look a lot like, say, I don't know, those. So you need to supply those. Let's face it, if you're watching this, you have dice, so I'm not too worried about it. We need to roll five dice. When we roll these dice, we're going to seed whatever we roll over in the left-hand column here from our resource pool. So let me talk about this. We're going to roll and we're going to choose resources to fill whatever numbers we've rolled. If we roll doubles, we stack up two identical on the left-hand column. There are spots available here for morale markers or resources. These are locked. Imagine these do not even exist until we choose on our turn to deploy, see, using that word, it's going to come out here and that's going to unlock another column, which is going to give us potentially not wasted resources. I'll explain it more in a little bit. But as it is, we're going to roll, we're going to put resources in here. Why this matters is whenever we draw one of our, uh, we activate one of our chits for us to take a turn, we are going to do whatever it says on that chit, and then these resources are going to cycle downward. As they cycle downward, <coughs> excuse me, they will eventually make it down into this row. When they make it to this row, whether it's just this one that's been unlocked, or maybe you've unlocked these and there are possibly resources in all of those, not only do you get access to those, you also get access to anything that you've stored. And you get to take an action for every one of your resources here if you don't want to store them, because again, they're one-time use, right? So, as these cascade down, so, if we put something in one, because we roll poorly, it's going to be six turns until it comes down to us. Keep that in mind. So this is going to require us to do a whole lot of fore, uh, uh, planning, a whole lot of forethought here into the order in which we're going to do things. But as it is, that's pretty much it for setup. Now, let's talk about what the hell we're trying to do in the game. All right, so let's come over. Well, you know what? I don't think y'all need me to zoom in over here. There are six planets, and I'm not even going to try and pronounce them right now. I'll, I'll struggle later. Y'all can make fun of me then. But there is the yellow planet, the red planet, the red planet, the green planet, the green planet, and the white planet. Okay? There are six planets. Goal of the game, colonize all six planets. What does that mean? Have bases simultaneously one on each of the planets. When you put bases on the various factions, planets, it pisses them off. They're gonna start doing things. You're going to go to war. They're gonna start fighting you. You're gonna try and fight them back. If you lose a base, it comes back. You then have to reestablish it or colonize it or build it or whatever word you want. You have to have six bases out here at the same time, one on each planet. That's the only way we win. How do we lose? If our stability ever drops to zero, if a bad guy ends up invading Earth, and there's one other thing that I cannot remember off the top of my head that I will talk about. Uh, right, if every faction has built uh, technologies and all of their technology tracks are full with their technologies, we lose. Let's, let's try not to let that happen, okay? All right. So how do we play the game? All right, I told you it's a chip pool game. So all of the chits are in the handy dandy little mug here. We're gonna shuffle this out. This queue will constantly be full. Let me stress that. There will never not be, there will never be an empty space, except while you're in the moment of taking an action. We will do the far right one, or not, depending on whether or not we can do it. It will slide over here. All of these will slide to the right. We will then redraw. Then we will activate that one. We will do it or not, put it here, and then we will slide, we will draw. Rinse and repeat until either we win or lose. That's it, okay? All right, cool. There you go, that's how we play. So before we do this, 
we need to roll. Um, and I did have it this way, so we'll see how this works. Oh, that was not a good roll. Should we reshow? Okay. All right. By the way, this is solo only. If that wasn't clear, I apologize. Um, and yeah, it's a standalone game. I, I know it's supposed to be... I watched... Uh, I forget who... I don't know the person's name. Um, you know what? I think I have it pulled up. A moment. I watched a couple of videos. There was one, the original Grognard. Um, and there was one other that I watched. And I will try and look that up here in a minute. Um, before, because I want to give credit. He's Australian. It's not a big channel, but I thought he did a wonderful job with it. Uh, and I believe that's Lock and Load, the original Grognard, I think. Rose City Gem Micha, by the way, my all-time favorite tea today. It's crappy weather here. It's good weather to be a duck or to be inside. And so here we are, all right? Rough Swordsman? Yes, I think that's it. Well done, Joshua. Well done. You get a cookie. Well done. All right. Moscow in the house. What's up? Did I see that lock and load? Who is that? Like, who is the person that is? Uh, is that uh, David Heath? I see. Has the lock and loads uh, uh, logo for their by their name. Awesome. All right. All right. All right. So I am going to re-roll because I realize we haven't talked about uh, over under and placing our bets. So I feel like that's not fair. So place your bets. Uh, over under on Glory to Rome's. It's going to be five and a half. I'm feeling salty today. Just so you know, I'm kind of in pain from my surgery. So I'm a little bit salty. Um, I'm excited about the game, but the rule book pissed me off. Not going to lie. Uh, so a little bit salty. So five and a half. And are we going to win or are meh going to win? Place your bets. Okay? All right. Oh, David is lock and load. All right, Nathan. All right, cool. Nice. And, uh, yeah, um, so David slash Nathan, is this available uh, across the pond over in Europe? Okay. Good. All right. So place your bets. I'm waiting to see, and I'm stalling, and I'm trying to get my bearings on everything. And then, uh, and then yeah, we'll get started. By the way, um, Nathan sent me a really nice letter uh, when he sent me the game here. He said, thanks for years of entertainment at this point. Loves watching the show. And he, he sent it, and I thought that was really cool. So I thought I would highlight the game, because I think it's going to be a really good one. I'm looking forward to today's playthrough. While y'all are placing your bets, uh, a couple of other things that I wanted to point out. There are five chits that are misprinted, okay? The five bases, all of these have stickers on them. Not this one, but these five have stickers. So, basically, the file is available. Um, Nathan was nice enough to send me this, which is available in the current rule book. You can either print that out or print it uh, or cut it out or print it on sticker paper and then put the stickers on the front and back side. Uh, but other than that, those are the only misprints tile wise. It's not the end of the world, um, but I did want to bring that up. So keep that in mind. So the five bases have stickers on them, but I think they did a good job with that. All right. All right. I like that. Uh, Greg, I think the saltiness that Edward is experiencing will lead to a gritty determination. Team Edward this afternoon. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. All right. So, y'all are doing this. Let's go ahead and I'm trying to see. You know, I think we got a little bit before we're going to have to. So, I'm going to. It wasn't much of a better roll, but it was a better roll. So, it's 1-1. One, one, Three, five, five. Okay. One, one. That was a three. Five, five. Now, now that we've got that, we are going to seed two of the same something and two of the same on those. So what is it we were going to want to do? Well, 
we're going to need to build a base so that we can unlock ships. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking we're going to need some movement, which it kind of sucks having it down here. But <sighs> we only have one movement, which would get us we could actually establish that base already early on. So you know what? Let's get a couple of builds. We're going to put two builds, and they must be the same there. Then, now that we have maybe established a base already, and I'm not sure which base we're going to do yet. I haven't, I haven't thought about that. That's just going to unlock another ship for us to be able to build. That's going to be a good thing. Um... Ooh, what do we do? You know what? How about we get some, some more research going? So we'll get a research one on the single there. I like that idea. Um, espionage, some diplomacy. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. What do we do on the ones? Because it's going to be a ways out. And the thing to keep in mind is we can only store five of these. So if we're thinking about, oh, maybe we'll hold off and we'll hold on to them, I don't know. And they have to be the same. So it can't be a research since we chose one of the reasons. We only have room for one, so it can't be there's only one research. There's two of everything else. Um, What do we do? I think, you know what? Let's do this. Let's do a couple of research back here and let's grab another fuel to put it there. So there's two research, there's two builds because doubles, you have to do that. I, you know what? I'm okay with that. What's up Elk? And thank you, Jim. I appreciate that. All right, I feel not terrible about that. I don't know if I feel great about it, but I feel not terrible about it. So now the dice will retire for the time being. And then activation queue time. So we have this. We're going to just do like so. And here we go. And I'm going to pull out kind of a handful and just put them out here one at a time, obviously. And there will always, I mentioned this. Oh, that's good. Now, here, here's one thing that I want to point out. On David's video here, he stopped filling the activation queue at this point, but I'm not 100%. Look, I'm not one to argue with the publisher often, but there are situations in which you're going to be able to discard things. These will not go away, so I think we still fill these even so. So we have that, and finally, we have that. All right, so there is, and uh, you know what, Nathan can correct me, Do we? can we stop at that or should we fill? That's the first biggest question that I have uh, early on here. Um, all right, so we have our very first activation, all right, it's going to be here. So let's go ahead and figure out what that is. That activation pointing at the planet is called spawn, okay? So in other words, create ships for the Synthonians, or Cotho uh, Synthonians, Cothonians. Again, my apologies to the, any Cothonians that are watching if I mispronounce it. But this is a spawn. So let's go ahead and look up here at the war effort. That spawn doesn't come into play until they mobilize or later. Because if we're at peace, why do they need to spawn or build ships? They don't. Awesome. So what does that mean? Done. Okay, cool. So then we're going to shift these over and we will redraw one. Okay, and Nathan says you should fill it in all the way. All right, excellent. Thank you. Appreciate the answer, Nathan. So the next one is going to be for the cyborgs, as you can see in the top left-hand corner. And that symbol, looking at the handy-dandy little cheater sheet, uh, the reference guide, is advance. Well, you guessed it. 
you come back up, oh, you come back up here. Uh, they don't advance until they're at war. So yeah, can't advance if you don't have ships. So okay, easy enough. Whoop, done. And then slide and draw. Hey, Christos. All right. By the way, again, I'm referencing the player aid, so you see advance, right? And you see, uh, where was the other one? It was spawn. By the, so you'll notice that we have some handwritten numbers on this. Apparently, they added a chapter uh, that was before six because all the sixes became sevens and the sevens became eights. So just FYI on that. So I had to make a little, okay. All right, so there we go. All right. Okay, so good news, we get to go. We get to party. Ain't no party like a, a Federation party and Federation party is good. So now we're gonna go to 8.1, which is here in the rule book, obviously. And we get to take our turn. Let me go back. All right. So there are going to be three different Federation tokens that we have. This is the best of the bunch, the double roll activation. Okay. There's going to be one that, or some that have only one of those, which means you just get to roll for resources as opposed to twice roll for resources. And then there is the least favorite. It is a single roll minus one. Because, again, the higher the number, the better the activation because the closer it is for us to get it. That makes sense? All right. Um, there you go. So uh, David says uh, the game's not in German, but it is available in Europe. You can get it from Second Chance Games. So if you're in across the pond, Second Chance Games. There you go. All right. Sorry, Weathered. We all have our crosses we must bear. All right. Cool. So we are going to activate our turn. All right. So now for a resource roll, we get to roll one die for every gear that is in play. All right. So uh, what gears are in play? Well, I'm really, really glad that you asked that. So let's go ahead and take a look at the map. And in fact, we're going to zoom in specifically here into the main area. See that little gear with a wrench? That's the symbol we're looking for. How many of them are there on the map? You guessed it, one right now. However, whenever we build a base, each base is going to get us another die to roll, which means more resources, okay? It also has some attack stuff and, and everything, but we'll, we'll cover all that stuff later on, okay? That's what the other symbol is. But as it is, we get to roll one die. However, the, uh, because our chit here, our activation one, says we get to roll one die, because we get to roll twice, so it's not two dice, but one die twice. Why does that matter? Because again, if we have doubles, we would have to put them on the same queue. It doesn't work that way. We're rolling one wrench, so one die twice. So we're gonna take one die, here, we'll roll it twice. Now, here's an, another important thing, and this is why it's going to probably be important for us to unlock at least the second row as soon as possible. There is something currently on five, there's resources on three, and there are resources on one. We cannot place anything on five, on three, and one. Even if we wanted to place the same thing, too bad, so sad, cannot. So in other words, we, if we roll a two, four, or six, Good. If we roll anything else, bad, because we forfeit the resource. However, if we had a second column unlocked, then obviously we have one through six could roll and we could add it down. It could be the same. It could be different. It doesn't matter because it's a separate slot. Hopefully that makes sense. So here we go. Even numbers. No whammies, no whammies, big bucks. Stop. All right. So one, that's a fail. So uh, nothing on the first one, but we get to do a second roll of it. So here we go. Four. Hey, that's good. We have an open slot and it's a higher number. So, hey, not terrible. So what do we want to throw out here? I ain't got a damn clue. Now, this morale is going to go up here. So maybe we put something that, that 
feels that I don't know. I don't know what the right thing to do is. We're going to have plenty of builds, so I'm not worried about that here. We have a little bit of fuel coming there. That's okay. We could all uh, we could jump start some research because we have more research coming there. That's not a terrible idea. The morale uh, is going to help us fight. Um, uh, it basically, if we lose something, we can move that tracker back. That's going to be nice. Um, or move our stability up one. But I think that's going to be a little bit later game, I think. Uh, diplomacy is going to help us manipulate this board to our, like, excuse me, got the hiccups, uh, up there. So I don't think, eh, but the espionage. The espionage is going to help us... Um, fight off their technology in a lot of ways. It's going to help us do that. It's also going to help us uh, mess around with the war effort and the politics track as well. But here's a really important thing. Every time we sacrifice, again, permanently removed from the game, and I made a little notes here on the different things. When we sacrifice certain things, we sacrifice an espionage, we're allowed to re-roll the dice for one combat. Like, or for one, all the dice, if we didn't like what we rolled. So that's something to keep in mind. But as it is, I don't know. Let's go ahead and get some more fuel out there, I think. I don't know if that's... No, I don't like that. We can't do research. We don't have any research tokens. I don't know. What do y'all want us to do? More morale potentially could open up our third column. Fuel, that's movement over here on the map. Espionage, basically slow down their technology because remember, when all of these are full, we lose. Or diplomacy is going to help us manipulate these. And I don't think that diplomacy is going to be terribly important early. Um, but choose. Morale, fuel... Uh, espionage or uh, diplomacy because those are only four because everything else is out here on the board or locked because we haven't unlocked it yet so choose so I'm seeing one morale one fuel so far keep going oh and while we're at it, where is it? There it is. While y'all are thinking about that. Whoa, that jumped way too big. Let's try that again. There we go. Ronald, hey, cheers. Thank you for the support. Very much appreciate it. Ronald went to, uh, there. Patreon.com forward slash HCHQ. Supported the show. Really appreciate that. Thank you, Ronald. Right before the, uh, the show. All right. Um, so what do we have? Let's see. And, and fair point, Nathan. The espionage sacrifice is not technically limited to combat dice. It could be like for research or whatever or any die roll. True, but I'm just looking at the combat stuff. So there's nice. Um, all right. Looks like fuel. I'm on board with that, so we will throw that out there. Boom. This, sort of done, but kind of activating now. So now, what we're going to do is everything drops one level, okay? At the, so we rolled, we did, and now these will drop one step. And we are that much closer to having access to these things. But as it is, we have access to all five of these. So the first thing, like I said, we're going to go ahead and deploy that there. This way, the next activation, uh, the next time that we activate our, uh, we get to take a turn. We don't have to worry about what we roll and we don't lose any like we did on this one. And we can just put it out here and start a second column. I think that's just a no-brainer to do early on. I feel like it, but I am far from an expert, okay? All right, so there's that. Now, 
The other thing that we could do if we want is we could move and then we could we could build. Uh, now, we could build, let me go ahead and move this over. What can we build? We can build soul defense. I feel like it's a little early, but if we don't have any good thing to do with the build, building that's not terrible, okay? We could build some mines. We can't build any more ships on soul because obviously uh, we have no ships in which to build, but you can convert a flagship on a base or on a planet to build a base. And then the ship comes back, which is ready to be built again. That might not be a terrible idea. I think that's kind of a cool idea. But the question now is what base? I think that's what we do. So if, if that's what we're going to do, let's go ahead. Uh, where can you get it from the US? I, I imagine you can buy the game straight from Lock and Load, I imagine. So we're going to spend our one fuel. Our one fuel is going to go back into the resource pool and one ship, one movement, one fuel. So, all right, so we could move either there, 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 or there. Uh, Quatera? All right, we have moved. So now we have this build icon. This build icon, we're going to go ahead and spend, and that's going to allow us to build a base. So our ship is going to disappear, and it's going to basically, they're gonna land, they're gonna colonize, and the ship then can be rebuilt, okay? Now, if we had desire up here at one, because again, expansion, right? The, 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 the folks on Earth really want us to be able to expand and, and everything. Um, it would then reset back to zero. But as it is, it's already at zero. We don't need to worry about that, okay? However, this is, uh, this is gonna piss off the, uh, the flesh eaters because we're colonizing on their planet. And maybe this is a terrible idea. I don't know, okay? But, but, we're gonna do it anyways. So now, which base is the big question? So, here we go. Any of the top four bases will unlock a ship and a random technology. We don't know what the technology is. Uh, I will, uh, you know what? Actually, I'm gonna do this before we go any further, because I want to make sure. The technology that's up here and the four that are here, let me show you, and I'll shuffle these up. They all have that symbol in the top left, okay? So now that I've shown that, I will shuffle all of those up. And then these four technologies are all different, but they have the, the uh, star system right there symbol. So those four will just be stacked up. Those will become available later on, uh, possibly, depending on what we do with that. But here we'll shuffle all those up. That's fine. We'll go there, 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 and one there. All right, cool. So we will unlock the two resources. Um, okay. And then it will unlock a ship for us to build. Okay, so we're going to have two ships. On that, and then uh, and then the, the 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 research as well. Okay. So which base? Which one do you all want? Yes, Earth is essentially defenseless for the time being. That is a fact, Jack. Okay. Now, if we choose the fifth one here, you'll notice that it does not get us any resource dice, but it does get us two morale and a diplomacy resource. And the last one isn't, we're not choosing this, but it gives us nothing except this will go up into the research, um, the unresearched technology, which will allow us to research a warp base, which basically gives us access to a couple more ships, the fancy technology, and some warp resources. Okay? All right. But I don't really have a good feeling 
about which one to do. To be 100% honest, I really don't know. Uh, I mean, the build one seems pretty good, but I don't know that we need it because we have two build resources about to come out. I kind of like the research one. That seems kind of tasty. I don't know. What do y'all think? Help me out. I like the research idea. I really kind of do. And I'm looking up one other thing real quick as far as the building. Um, yeah, whenever we build, we build on soul. Uh, whenever we build ships and mines and such, okay? Uh, all right, seems unanimous. We're going we're gonna to go ahead and uh, build the research base. So, Quatera becomes a research base. The ship now comes over into our unbuilt assets, but it's temporary. It's okay. It's okay. Then these two will then come over into there. I will make a mess. We now have two ships there. And Nathan, why the dual symbols on the bases? What's, uh, what's that represent, by the way? And then the research will then go up there, but we don't get to see it. So we have two up there. Now, whenever we get to do research, we get to look at t up to two, choose one, and put it onto the 0%. So that seems pretty good too, okay? All right, but we're not done because as I mentioned, flesh eaters, they don't take kindly to you colonizing Quatera, as you might could imagine. So what happens? It drops one spot now down towards total war. We're in a cold war with them. So what does that mean? What that means is now they can start build, uh, building technologies. That's the difference between peace and cold war. They're like, ah! We're going to start doing some stuff because y'all are messing with us. So there we go. Okay. All right. Ah, reminder of what resources they unlock. Thank you. I've wondered about that. All right. So that is our build. Awesome. Done. We have these two resources left. Now, some thoughts. The research, the research basically, like I said, we're going to be able to look at what those are. We're going to choose one of them, turn it face up, and put it over here in the 0%. Then, every time we research, say here, we got a ways, we're going to roll. And depending on how well we roll, we're either going to move it one or two steps that way, and then as it goes up, it gets harder and harder to research. And then eventually, it gets to 100%, it comes over here, hey, it's now a rule breaker for us, whatever that special ability is. There's a lot of them, so I couldn't tell you what it is. And by a lot, I mean five. Um, and I don't know what they are. So... Okay, all right. Um, so we could research that, but, but, we have a couple of builds coming. Yeah, we're probably not, I think maybe we do go ahead and research. What do y'all think? I, I think so, I think we do. So we will go ahead and research. So now let me grab the handy dandy little. We will initiate research, okay? Uh, so you reveal two technologies, choose one of them, and then, uh, and, then, and then figure it out. So we will have to look at what these are. So we have that one and we have that one. So I'm pretty sure I know what both of those are, but you know, we don't need to guess. The first one, or that one, is enhanced targeting system. Add one to the result of each die roll in combat. For each modified die roll's uh, result of a seven, apply two hits. So they stack. So if we were to get hits uh, in combat are fives or sixes, fives or higher. So that's good. Okay. That's going to be good for combat. 
the real-time translator says add one die to all espionage contested roll attempts. Select the die result of your choice for your attempt. Now, what does that mean? Well, when we get into contested espionage, rolling low is terrible. It, lower, it brings them closer to war, they get technologies, and we don't stop them from getting their technologies. Rolling high, not only will our spies remain, but it also keeps them from getting technologies. I'm leaning towards the real-time translator, but I'll leave the peanut, let the peanut gallery decide, okay? Hey, Jonathan. So I'm leaning towards real-time translator or the advanced targeting system. Enhanced targeting system, sorry. While I get a drink, y'all make your decision. Ooh, there's a discount on Zoom today. What's up, Cray? New Zealand in the house. All right, well, translator one out. I agree with y'all, good, boom, done. Now we have to turn this face down, shuffle it up. Okay, there we go. So we're just gonna kind of put that up there to get it ready. Our research is done. Now, we do have an espionage uh, uh, token over here, but let's go over what we can do with an espionage uh, token right now, which to be honest with you, we're not going to do this, but what can we do? We can sabotage technology, okay? So we spend it, put it back into our supply, and if there are any existing technologies out here, we can target one of them, okay? And we're going to roll, and if the die result matches a space in the alien's technology track that contains an alien technology, then we destroy it. So in other words, let's say we say we're going to target uh, the, uh, the mutants, and they have three of them. One there, there, there. If we roll a four, five, or six, we get to destroy that technology. It goes back into their stack. Okay, that's one option with it, which obviously is not an option since there are no technologies out there. The next is we could deploy it. So we could take this chit and put it out here into one of these spots. Okay, and it always fills from the six on up, so we would put it into one of the six spots. This is a diplomatic attache. Uh, we put it over there. Um, oh, check that. I'm wrong. Wrong step. Diplomatic attache will actually go up here into there. And basically what that's going to do is it's going to allow us to, maybe they were going to go to war with someone, and we're like, no. Nah, let's not. We can talk them out of it. Or maybe, hey, they're going to have an alliance and we're like, eh, maybe not. So that's what that will be, okay? However, if we roll poorly on that and they die, well, it's espionage. So that will drop down and bad things happen. Slow research, we could deploy it over to here and basically it will be contested. We'll roll. Depending on how we roll, we either stop them from developing it and we get to keep our espionage out there or our spy is killed but we stop them or the spy is killed and they still get it the last two are both bad results so and the other thing is we can sacrifice this to re-roll something but obviously none of that is really coming into play right now so we're not going to do it so we're done we're just going to go ahead yeah we'll keep it right there we're going to store it boom done that's the end of our activation okay all right whoa there we go all right, so our activation is done. Now what happens? These three chits go back into the cup. So whenever we take a turn, anything that's in there goes back into the cup and slide and go. Now, these turns will speed up as we go along, but as it is for right now, 
I just wanted to uh, step through the first few times that we do this so that y'all can see and you get a feel for it, okay? All right, all right, so we now activate uh, here. These are the uh, Scythonian, Cthonians, Scythonians, whatever, them, the yellow folk here. This is border friction. So you know what, now that we have kind of covered that a little bit better, I think what we're gonna do now is we're gonna move that to here so that we can see both the activation as well as can we actually activate it. We're gonna do like so. There we go. All right, cool. All right, so this is gonna be border friction. Border friction is if you have a base within this alien race's territory, um, their war effort advances, one. So in other words, if we had built on the yellow, if we had built a base here, it would have pissed them off. As it is, it didn't. So, boop, nothing, done. Pretty simple there. Okay, good. All right, next one. Oh, check that, draw. I gotta keep this over here. Chthonian. Okay, fine. Everyone's a critic. Again, my apologies to any Chthonians out there. Okay. All right. All right. Exact same thing. Boop. Keep them moving. You know what? I ain't got anything going for a while, so. And I don't know what the distribution is, before you all ask. I do, uh, Nathan could probably tell us how many of our chits are in there. I don't know in the medium game. All right, the next one is going to be uh, technology. Technology for the cyborgs doesn't apply because they're not here. So, boop, done. All right, cool. Hey. There, there we are. That's good. All right. The next one is... I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking. I don't have the names committed to memory. That's an advance. Well, they don't have ships. That's going to be for the, uh, for the mutants. They don't have ships. Don't need to worry about that. How many different types of activation tokens are there? Here, I'll do it this way. It's easier to show y'all than try and explain. Uh, all the activation tokens are those and those. There are 52 of them, and I suppose I could look. So of our symbols that aren't green, there are nine total, but let's see, that are just green. One, two, three, three of them. So we have six. One, two, three, no, four, no, five, six. So it looks like six of them are ours. Okay, there we go. Have a good one, Greg. Sounds fun. And Greg, you'll have the podcast here soon. Uh, in, probably on Friday. Okay, all right, cool. Nope, no scenario. Um, the only thing different is the uh, difficulty level. That's it, okay? All right, so no, we don't need to worry about that. Okay, so now this next one is expansion. And this one I wanna look up. So expansion I'm looking, where is it? Hold on. 726. Oh, okay, expansion. Now, on this, you'll notice that it has that symbol. It's not a faction specific. It means everybody. So expansion desire moves the expansion desire counter from zero to one. If it's at one, your stability marker goes down. Boo, hiss, boo. So what does that mean? Uh, so expansion desire, uh, the people want us, apparently they were not sated by us, uh, uh, 
putting out a base in Cathoniumville there. Um, so, yeah. All right. All right. So, done. That can go. We slide. Ooh, good. That'll be nice because we will have two turns. Uh, not quite back to back, but close. All right. So next one, uh, Chthonians. No, don't need to worry about it. Ooh, random event. All right. So this one is not anything we're going to be doing, but the, where is that? I'm looking. Oh, that's a fast raider. Okay. So the fast raider one right here, again, not faction specific. The fast raider says check for any alien race with a fast raider tech in their technology track. None of them do. For every alien race that has one, advance their raider fleet one space towards Seoul. So if they had their raider fleet, which is their two value ships here, if they had them out here, they would move one number closer to Seoul. Everybody would. Okay? If they have a fast raider tech, but their raider fleet is still in the spawn order track, spawn order track being these here, not on the board per se, uh, they spawn their, their, their raider fleet. That's bad. And then, um, if no alien race has the fast raider tech, this effect defaults to a random event. So we're going to have a random event. And that's what this is. So we will do the random event, and then we will get to do our turn. All of those actions happen between our turns. So, we have a random event. All right, you see those chits? Those seven, pick a number one through seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Pick a number, and we'll choose that one. And that's going to be our random event. Oh, hey, good news. Casper return. Good. So, uh, Jess and I, we bought a new mattress uh, about two months ago. Um, we needed one and uh, got, a, got a Casper, and it was too soft, so we ended up getting a return for it. They picked it up today, so they already, they're processing it now, so that's good. They donate it. That's cool when they're done. Uh, ended up with a uh, Satva or Satva, S-A-A-T-V-A. -A -A. Wow, is that a comfortable mattress. Firmer than we would have thought we would have wanted, but a wonderful mattress. So, all right. Uh, looks like two fives came out first, so it's going to be fives. All right. So what do we have? What do we have behind door number five? Let's look. And these are the seven events that are available. And what it is basically is going to be, it's going to be one of these symbols. So we will figure that out. It's going to be internal politics. So that's going to go up there. But now... We need to roll a die to figure out what's going to happen with it. So we will roll one die. And that's going to be a six. General rule, uh, sixes are good for us. Uh, free propaganda action. Okay. So now let's go over here back to the rule book to check the, uh, the free propaganda action for the random event. A moment. I don't have all these committed to memory. I apologize. I went too far. It's before our actions. There it is. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, this is way better than I thought it was. Um, okay. I'm looking, let me find the actual, so it's 831, propaganda, there we go. Spend a morale to conduct a propaganda action. Move expansion desire or military losses down by one or federation stability up by one. So now, what does this mean? Well, first off, we drew 
that chit, we rolled, we did this. It's going to stay here. So then on the next time we have a random event, you're gonna pick a number one through six, and then we're gonna put it out. They all stay out until we have drawn seven of them and we've done seven of them. And just because we drew this, next time we might roll a three or a five or whatever. You get the idea. So there's a, even though there's only seven chits, there's way more than that because of how things work, right? Anyway, so we get a free propaganda action. That's going to be great for us. And then the next one, uh, it's just going to hang out. So great. So what does that mean? That means that has to do with up here. Okay. All right. So stability is already pegged out. We're good there. Our losses are already pegged out in a good way. Zero. So our desire, hey, folks, we already established something. Chill. Just chill. Because again, after it goes past one, it pings, resets, and that will drop down. And that's one of the ways we lose. So hey, well done us. Good choice, everybody. Great roll. We go into Sizzler. All right. So that was the uh, uh, random event that wasn't that that defaulted to the random event. One other thing that this game really could use, Nathan, or for anybody that makes player aids, is a handy dandy little player aid to where I don't have to reference this, which references this, which references that. If they, oh, hey, okay, you do this. If you can't do that, do that. If you can't do that, do this. And not having to reference the rule book for that, that would be nice. Just saying. All right. So we are done with that. We are going to redraw because, again, we are constantly drawing. That is not for us. That is going to be for the mercenaries. That's going to be greed. That's not for us. So keep that in mind. But as it is, we are going to go ahead and take that action. We'll move that off to the side. And that is we get to roll one die for every resource uh, symbol out here on the board. Where did I put it? There. And that is going to be two. So we get to roll two dice. And this will be simultaneous, all right? So we have one symbol there, we have one symbol there, so we get to draw two, or roll two. Where did I put it? Right there. All right, so, but they are minus one. So even if we roll a six, we're not getting them this turn. Okay, not so bad, not so bad, okay? Um, all right, so we rolled a couple of fives. So in that case, there is something in five. That's, oh, wait, we put that out there. So we can put two identical resources on the second spot. And we will, in fact, do that. Uh, how about some research? Because if you take a look, and I'll just, we have two of everything except for the fuel. And you know what? I think getting that espionage uh, that 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 real-time translator sounds like a pretty cool idea getting that going um, and no uh, Moby Dane because of it says it's a free uh, propaganda action it's as if I had spent it so I didn't need to spend it okay all right there you go, what Nathan said. So I'm thinking we go ahead and grab a couple of research for that. So we'll grab two of these bad boys. And they go on fives, minus one, they become fours, right? Because it was five minus one. So there we go. Okay. And then what do we do? We advance everything on the tracks. Excellent. So we got stuff coming to us for the next three rounds. So what does that mean? These are now available to us, and it's our turn. Now, it's not going to be as exciting of a turn as it was in the first one, because we have only three over here, but it's okay. It's okay. But we have a couple of builds. Um, I know one of them. One of them, for sure, is going to be to bring our ship, and that comes back out on Seoul. Good news, Seoul is not defenseless now. But now we have a kind of an interesting idea or interesting dilemma here. And I think I know what I want to do, but let's go ahead and talk about this. So when you build, you can either build or you can upgrade. I think there's actually a third thing that we can do with a build, uh, a moment. 
settle a base, which is building a base, we can upgrade or forward deploy. Uh, yeah, forward deploy is we could sacrifice a build to place a minefield or a flagship from an, the unbuilt assets here uh, into a space adjacent to an already built flagship uh, or settled base. So we could place it like there or there or there, etc. You get the idea. Oh, shoot. There is one other really important thing I forgot to mention. Um, let me let me double back on this. I apologize. Okay. Here. When we built this base, we upset the flesh eaters. The flesh eaters went down one step, not because we built a base, but because we built a base one space away from Seoul. If we had built a base here, it would have taken us two fuel to get there, but I digress. This is two spaces away. One, two, they would have advanced their war track, their war effort track down two, meaning it would have dropped from peace down to mobilize. So I wanted to spell that out. Okay. All right. Cool. All right. But we built this ship. That's going to be one of our two builds. I'm putting that back out there. Now, what we can do here is we can we upgrade and actually, the bases don't upgrade, do they? Oh, they do. They do. We could upgrade a base, which goes from, and let me show, you know what? Instead of moving, how about I just move the camera? There we go. You'll notice, if they're attacked, they get a die. This symbol with the cross swords over in the bottom left-hand corner is a little bit better for us. And let me get, for combat... Uh, the cross uh, sword says if a, uh, an enemy movement into that space triggers a combat roll. In addition, it also gives uh, the player one extra die for the combat roll. And the bonuses can stack. So it's better defense if we were to spend the build as an upgrade on that. So that is option number one for the build. Option number two is we could just save it for right now. Not a terrible idea. Keep it in our back pocket if we want, okay? Option number three, I put it on the wrong spot. There we go. Option number three, we could build another ship. Option number four, we can build soul defense, which remember, if we lose earth, we die. In addition to that, for the resource roll, that's going to give us another die. That seems really good. We could build mines. Uh, and mines are pretty self-explanatory. And the flip side of mines are just like the flip side of bases as well. Okay? Except mines are just out there in space and it's like a minefield. I really like the idea of putting this out here because it's going to give us an extra resource whenever we roll. And it protects Earth. That just feels like a really, really good idea to me. So that is going to go ahead and go on to Earth. Right there. That's going to be our second build. And boom, we are done. Because we're going to keep our intrigue there. All right. Y'all with me? You good? We good? We did that. That goes over. And then what happens? All of these go back into the cup. All this making sense? Y'all y'all with me? Feeling good? Yeah, building up the economy. Uh, yeah, exactly. More dice. I, I agree. I think that feels like a no-brainer. Um, all right. So, we activate now. Uh, this is going to be for the cyborgs. And the cyborgs, that is... I, I really wish that I had this committed to memory, and I apologize that I don't, but... That one's border friction. Uh, if we have a base in the cyborgs, uh, uh, on the cyborg uh, planet, then they advance. They don't. So we move on. And then, hey, it's our turn. Cool. But we're going to draw one. There we go. Okay. So it's our turn. We get one die per symbol that we have out on the board. And I realize you might not be able to see it from where you are, but we have one here. We have one there. We have one there. That's going to be tray dice. So, three dice. That will come over to here. One, two, and six. Not the end of the world, 
Six, it's going to activate right now and filling up to where we get things later on. It's okay. It's okay. So what do we want this turn? I don't know. Um, I do know. We're going to grab a fuel. Are we? Oh, you know what? Now might be a good time for diplomacy because give me one second on that. Because uh, diplomacy should be able to help us establish an, let's see. Uh, yeah, actually we're gonna go diplomacy on the six. I'll explain why in a minute. So we have second row there available to us. And then we have a one and a two. Um, I think some more build on two sounds good. Which that's going to be our second base, I'm thinking here. And if we're going to build a base, then we're going to need a ship to become, since that's going to go away. I kind of like that idea. But the problem is, if we were to build here, right, just on that thought, if we were to turn that into a build, we only have one fuel. One fuel gets us to there, 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 or there, which isn't a planet. Now, if we, oh, I see what you're saying. We could build the second base, save it, and then build it there. Ugh. But I think having the diplomacy will offset the war effort and not piss them off. I, I hear you, but I think that's the direction we're going to go. Yeah, I think it is very Eurogamer friendly. I, it, it, this is a pretty good mix, I feel like. So there's our 6, 2, and 1. We're good. Everything drops. There we go. And now we have these three. All right. So now let's talk about the diplomacy, okay? All right, so the, the diplomacy, a little hard to see, and I wish they wouldn't have done blue on black for that, but I digress. So you see the flag. The diplomacy is a few different things, okay? The first thing is we can establish an embassy. So we deploy the diplomacy onto the war effort track. It basically uh, tries to, attempts to prevent the war effort between us and an alien race from moving towards total war. So maybe we think we're going to build a base. So we build a embassy, okay? Because what's going to happen then is we come over to the war effort track. So let's say we're planning on moving our ship, let's say to Poiselia here. So we move it this turn. We move it later, and then eventually we're going to want to build a base. That is two spots away from Earth, right? From Seoul. Well, if we were to establish a embassy, we would put this right there down below where the uh, uh, Chthonians are. And if so, the next time that that would supposed to drop down, we're going to roll a die and it's going to be a contested effect. So hopefully we roll high, and hey, they, they're like, you know what, we're not thrilled, but we'll let it go. Okay? So does that make sense? Okay? If that fails, bad thing happens, but... So that's one option that we can do with di uh, diplomacy, is establish a embassy. So that's really, really good. A second thing is we can spend that, so back to the supply there, and move the political status marker of the selected alien race one step back up. So we could just spend it and move here for the flesh eaters back up. And we get to look at what's coming up and there's nothing really there. So maybe we don't need to worry about that too much. I don't know. Okay. Hey, Alyssa. So, but it, it spend that to push something up one track. And the last thing 
is... Oh, let me, let me step back. Doing that to pushing that back up requires that you have an embassy already, meaning you have a marker already there. We could sacrifice this, meaning out of the game, to push any one up one. That's the difference. So there you go. So that's the option for the diplomacy. And so what I think we should do is take a look at the map and try and figure out who do we want to mess with? Where do we want to go and build the next base at? And I think that's who we establish a, a, uh, an embassy with. Um, I mean, who do you all feel like? The Chthonians, the mutants, or the cyborgs? We're not going to do the flesh eaters right now with their second planet. And whatever one we choose, that's where we're going to spend the fuel to move next turn. I think that's what we do. Okay? I like that idea. So choose. Chthonian, uh, mutant, or cyborg. And then that's going to be our turn at that point. So I will, while y'all decide, I'll go ahead and throw these back in here. I'm not going to draw until you decide. Well, I'll draw, but I won't show you. Mutants are friends, not food. Cyborgs are the two first ones. All right, cyborgs it is. Okay, that has been decided. And we drew that. Oh, well, that worked out really well. That's cool. All right, so the cyborgs, y'all say, uh, the cyborgs are the green ones, so we're going to put that bad boy right there, and that's our reminder. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Alyssa. All right. And Nathan, to be clear, uh, one other question I had is when we go and establish a base here in Ascao and it's two steps away, the cyborgs would normally drop down two steps. If we succeed with the embassy, does that stop them one step or does it stop them both steps? Question on that. All right. So we're done with our turn and now it is now... That is going to be, I am 99% sure, just a random event. All right, so it's a random event. So we go back to the random event. Pick a number one through six, y'all. One, two, three, four, five, six, and we'll go through it. Now, I could be making this playthrough considerably quicker, but I think the interaction, I think this is good. I think this is enjoyable. Ah, you make two different rolls. Thank you, Nathan. Okay, got it. <coughs> uh, that's impressive. We got all five numbers in the first five guesses, or first five choices. Looks like five was the first one to get two. So five it is. All right, so five. All right, so we have foreign relations. I, okay. Um, all right, let's see. So, two. Two is a military alliance. Okay, now, a moment while I go through this, because I want to make sure I get all of these rights. Okay, now we need to roll a die to determine the involved races and move the political marker towards uh, towards the alliance. Okay. So we will now roll. So let's come over now to the political one. Let's roll. And that is a three. So we rolled a three. So we now take a look at the number. So what do we have? So we have the numbers over here. That's going to be a three. So it's going to be over there. Okay. So now the Chthonians and the mutants have an alliance. Now, in addition to that, and I mentioned this, the mercenaries 
do not like when the Chthonians and mutants are either at alliance or at war. And I need to remember what that symbol represents a moment on that. Um, the mercenaries find it more difficult to work in the sector. They move their war status one step towards peace. Okay? So in other words, whoop, that goes up one. Every time the, Mer the mercs are also scared of us. Anytime we defeat them in combat, they will go whoop, up one more space as well. Okay? All right. There we go. That is the event. Draw. All right, the next one I believe is greed. It is greed. If you're Gordon Gecko, greed is good. Unfortunately, we are not Gordon Gecko. Uh, the mercenaries are a greedy bunch and they see a, an opportunity and aggression towards you. Move their war effort towards total war. Mercs. So uh, that, that, we all right, so be it, blarg. So that event that happened, it was a very, very short-lived uh, impact on the mercs there. All right, the next one. I really wish I had a better memory and could commit this stuff to memory. The advance, obviously the advance is not happening because that, okay, move on. All right, Fast Raider, again, we've already gone through the Fast Raider stuff, so none of those are out there on the board. So because they are not out on the board, we then do a random event. So that will go away. We will bust out the random event and we will draw, but you're not going to see what that is quite yet. That's the universal backside of it. All right, so random event, one to five. I mean, long arms, but still, that's a ways away, all right? Oh, yay! Glad. Glad to hear people are getting their vaccines, or at least eligible to. That's awesome. Really, really glad. Looks like four. That was quick. Okay. So... Uh, what did I do with my forceps? There they are. All right, so four it is, as you all can see. Military. All right, let's drop that down to that side. All right, so military comes on down, and now we must roll. We roll one die. Six. Again, sixes are universally pretty good for us. It's a free build, a flagship so or soul defense. Now, it is specific that it says a build. It does not say an upgrade. Okay? So, we take a look. We have one ship, and we, we don't have our soul. It didn't say mine, so I guess that ship, that's awesome. That comes out there. Well done! That's awesome. All right. Woo. All right. So now we have uh, two dice per symbol out there on the board. Uh, how many symbols do we have? I think we have three, right? Yeah, we have one, two, three symbols. And each one gets to roll twice. So we're going to roll a set of three twice. Okay, let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> little, little Tomoke action. 
All right, what am I doing? Here we go, all right. Uh, one, six, four. Well, good news, bad news. We can't do the six, because we don't have the second level open, and it's blocked, so that goes away. But we do have a one, and we have the four there. Okay. Um, we're going to use up all of our fuel between these two to be able to move to establish the base. So I think for the four, we go ahead and grab another fuel. I, I know that's ahead of our build there, but I think having that ready for us Or, 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 better yet, how about we do our last research? And that's just a massive research turn. What do you think of that? Thank you, Chuck. I like that. So then, so now that we've kind of established what that is, I think we can go there for our resources um, so that y'all can see what we have. Uh, maybe another diplomatic? to be able to offset some of the some of the pissing off that we're gonna do. Seems like a not terrible idea. Uh, the other option is a morale, which potentially could open up a third row. I don't know. I don't know. I like the research up here, because maybe if things go well, we have a total of five research rolls. One, two, three, four, five. We only need to succeed on one, two, three. Let's see. Roll one. Yeah, maybe three of them. But I like that idea. But I'm not 100% sold on this one. We, we could. Um, I don't know. What do y'all think? What do y'all think? Hmm. Well, all right. I say we keep it where it is. We'll call it good. We got our resources there. So now what do we have? I don't think we actually do anything this turn. I think uh, we're okay on our espionage holding off on that and keeping our fuel until we can actually do something with it. Um, yeah, I think, I, I think we just forego our turn. So that's it. Well, we got Reese. Oh, whoa, 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 back up, back up. Everything drops. That's a bigger deal. Never mind. I forgot about that step. That seems like a really important step. There we go. Okay. So I misspoke. So we have two fuel, two research, and an espionage. Well, I do think the research. I think we need to go ahead and get going. So we're going to conduct research, okay, on the one technology that we have. We could, now we do know what this is. We could use one of the research to start that, but I don't think that would necessarily be the best thing to do. I think we just focus on the one. So we're gonna conduct research. We get one roll for every technology token on the technology track. Ooh. Oh, hold on. I forgot about that one. Hey, Alexander. So let me, let me say that again. You may spend a research to conduct research on active projects. Not on one active project, but on all of them. Roll one die for each technology token on the technology track. And then do whatever it says. So maybe we have two techno, or we have two research. Maybe we start this one and then that roll applies to both of them. If we roll a four, five, or six, it gets a double jump. It will move up to there. Single jump on everything else. These mean it doesn't move. This means it moves in the wrong direction. When it gets to 100%, it then applies to us. Um, 
Yeah. I kind of like the idea of getting uh, the plus one on the uh, on offense. What do y'all think? Do we spend one of our two research? Because we have three more coming. We might be able to get both of them done. Wow, I think we do. Yeah, I think we do. So let's spend one research, flip that over, and that's going to come into play. I think that's just a great idea. And then we'll spend the other research to roll, and hopefully we roll a four, five, or six. Y'all with me? Okay. So. Yep. So these advance one. Okay. There we go. But at least there's that. I think that's not terrible. I think that's a pretty good idea. All right. So now our turn is over because we're going to hold off on the fuels. Um, yeah, I'm good with that. So these will go back into there. Okay. Oh, you roll for each tech separately. Back up. Thank you, Nathan. So we'll, we'll just do top to bottom. I knew that too, but you roll. So one, one chit allows you to roll for everything, but you roll separately. So that was for that one. So we're going to roll one for that one then. Okay. And that will go there. Thank you, Nathan. My bad on that. Okay. Provided I did that right. All right. Again, you would think I would have these committed to memory, and I don't. All right, the next one is a war event. Dun, 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 dun. Seven two two. Alien war event. Here we go. Check for any alien races currently at war in the political overview. Well, um, that'd be the Mercs. For every alien race that is currently at war, check their central play area for a base within their territory. Well, the Mercs never have bases in their territory. Uh, okay. If such a base exists, take a hit to the base of your choice within the warring faction space. If there's no such base, increase the expansion desire. When done, complete a random event as above. So again, if you take a hit of your base of your choice, if there's no such base, your expansion desire goes plus one. I assume it's one, it's not one per faction. I believe it's just one. So if it's just one, that means that goes there and there will be a random event. Pick a number, one through four. Okay. And that will go there. There we go. Man, I love that tea. All right, well, y'all are y'all are fading on me. So I'm gonna go with number four. All right, this is another military one. So, with it being another military, that is the second and last military one. We will roll. And that is a three. So faction. Spawn Advance Invasion Fleet. Okay. So, what's going to happen now, uh, I believe we have to roll the die to determine which race will be affected by the event. Now, even though they are not at war, 
with us. This trumps, okay? So what I mean by this trumps is even though we're not at war and we're not mobilizing, they are still going to be able to spawn, okay? So now we're going to roll a six-sided die based on this, and uh, hopefully we... What do we want? Um, we don't want a six, and we don't want a... So we want a four or five would be great. Okay, four or five. Uh, that's a three. A three is the uh, flesh eaters. So the flesh eaters are going to spawn uh, or advance their invasion fleet. So the spawn now. So it's their invasion fleet? Really? No. So their big boy comes out? Really? Really? Or is it their rightmost? It does it spawn or advance their invade. No, it says their invasion fleet. That's pretty clear. Ay vey. All right. This is bad for us. So their invasion fleet, their big one, is going to come out onto the board. Normally it'd be yuck, yuck, yuck. Oh. All right, that was not a good event for us. Yeah. All right, done. I mean, it is a war event, after all. All right. Is that, yeah, that is mixing them. Okay, just making sure. Okay. Next, spawn uh, for the mercs. So you'll notice the mercs are at total war. That is available. So spawn is going to be, and let me make sure I get this right since it's the first time we're doing this. The rightmost fleet in the spawn track is moved to the highest number space. Whee! All right, so the rightmost, so the lowest, their easiest level, their, their, uh, their scout is going to come out to their highest number. So that's going to come out there. And then these slide over. And then if anything is destroyed, it gets put back in the far left spot. Okay? All right. So that one is done. There. I, I think it'd be cool if we get a turn here. What do you think? So sorry. So this one, uh, Fast Raider. So again, the Fast Raider isn't going to happen for either of these. And I believe those are going to be back-to-back -back events then, correct? For Fast Raider. Let's see. If the Fast Raiders aren't out, they're not. Or they don't have the tech. Yep, it's going to be back-to-back -back events is basically what's going to happen, depending on if this is something happens here that affects this. So pick a number, one through three, and then we'll see how it goes, okay? Oh shoot, you are correct. Let's go back. The the mercs always will advance because they are at total war. So not only did they spawn, they get an automatic advance. There you go. Good call on that, Nathan. Thank you. All right. Looks like three it is. So three is going to be that one. And uh, that's going to be the economy. It's the economy, stupid. All right, so that will go there, and uh, let's hope for a six. That doesn't look like a six. Spend build. If you have a build to spend, you must. So in other words, if you have stored any resources uh, with that. We don't. Um, so if available, spend the specified resource from in priority order. Stored resources. 
deployed resources, if it's whatever it is out here, like, you know, like diplomacy or whatever, for instance, or the next resource you would receive from the resource track. Spend the specified resource or the next resource you would, okay. So now here's the question. Clearly, we do not have any builds here. These are the next ones. None of those specifically are builds. If they were builds, we would spend them. Oh, it would be that one. So that one gets spent. Aha, I understand that now. I believe, since that's the next build, that goes away. Okay, this is turning less good. Gah! Clearly, I got all my good rolling out of the way. All right, well, that's done. Now pick a number one to two for the next event, because the next event is going to be that one, and we'll go ahead and fill these in the meantime. Hey, there we are. That's good. Get some more resources there. That's good. And not us. All right. So one or two. Grr. Grr. All right. Looks like one it is. All right. A little foreign relations. All right, uh, let's see what we get. Three, Research Alliance, okay. Diplomatic, Military, and Research. And, huh, so roll one to determine the, 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 the races. Oh, and then if there's an overage, oh, that's what that is. Okay, so let's roll and figure out uh, which one it's going to be. So this is going over to the politics now. So, and that's a three. So the three is going to move towards alliance. Oh, it's already in alliance. So what's going to happen now is that's going to be what's called an alliance overage. So now we go to 923 in the rule book. And 923 for the alliance overage. An alliance overage occurs when a universal event token triggers an alliance between two alien races already in alliance. Then, depending on what type, things will happen. This is a research one. Okay, so both races gain a tech as if they had a tech result activation token, but ignore the... So in other words, they both get one of their techs. So both meaning here and here. So the uh, Chthonians and the mutants both get a tech. All right? Yeah, now they're super best friends. Exactly. Um, one other question, Nathan, then? Because this triggered again, does that move the Mercs up one spot or not? All right, so it is going to be this faction and this faction, and we're just going to pick one at random there, and we're going to pick one at random there. So the Chthonians have that tech, and let's figure out what those are. Okay, 12 2. That's it. A moment. All right, so that one is going to be Raider Protocols. The scout fleet of this faction now also obeys all Raider fleet. So, in other words, their level ones also apply to their level twos. So, they'll move towards uh, Occupy Worlds and advance during fast Raider events. So, there's that. Yay. 
And then on the other side of things, this one, that is going to be an auto respawn. <laughs> All fleets of the faction automatically spawn when destroyed. They put it in their highest uh, numbered space. That sucks. So glory to Rome on that. It won't come into play yet, but I imagine that's not great. Hey, Drew. Only when it moves into the space. Okay, that's what I thought. Oh, yeah, and, 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 because they're allies, this applies to this, and this applies to this. Hmm. For their factions, okay? So, uh... No, the Chthonians didn't, but the Flesh Eaters got their invasion force out there. This has been terrible. That was a terrible turn. Wow. Okay. All right, now the Chthonians would spawn. Sorry, wrong camera. Uh, there you go, but they're, they're, they're not here, so we're good. So we skip that. We move that over. All right, uh, that one is border friction, and does anything happen, I forget, when nothing is over there? I don't believe so. No, okay, because we don't have a base in the Chthonian area, so we don't do anything with that there. Well, at least we have two turns on the board. However, Fast Scout now comes into play. And the Fast Scout is going to do something now. And the Fast Scout is 724. All right. Okay, check for any alien race with the Fast Scout tech in their technology track. Well, oh. They do not. Okay, so hold on. So that one doesn't apply then. It doesn't go both ways. It only goes in one way. So that's a scout fleet of this function also now obeys all raider fleet rules. They move towards during fast raider. So that doesn't happen. Okay, well, at least there's that for the scouts. Uh, for each copy of the Fast Scout tech that the alien race has, advance their scout one step towards Seoul. Uh, nobody has the tech, da 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 da. So it's going to be a random event. So this will cause a random event. There we go. Okay. All right, so we have one random event left that it can be. So this will have been all of the random events. So this is obviously going to be technology. So technology drops down. And here we go. Uh, I, I, vote, I vote for six. Six would be great. That was not a six. Uh, spend research. I don't wanna. <laughs> Damn it. So one of these three goes away. That goes up. Because again, it goes here, it goes stored, then it goes the track, so screw you. But hey, now it's our turn. All right, so we get two. So we get to roll twice. Again, one, two, and three. So we get to roll three dice twice. One, two, six. Eh. Um. Ah, boy. Things are happening now. I don't know what to do. Um.
you know what? Let's get that one back that we had lost. So there's the six, and then the one and the two. You know what? We'll go with, I forget who said it earlier, but had said, uh, let's go ahead and get some morale there for the two. And then for the one, well, hold on. How about we do this? How about we do that and we get that build that we lost right there? I think so. I think, uh, I think that works. All right. So we're done then with our resource, but now drop, drop. Okay. So we have one research. Let's go ahead and spend that bad boy. And everything up top, we get to roll one die. Okay. So we'll start with the more advanced. The more advanced, we will roll this first. So obviously a six. If, if we roll a six, it becomes ours. If we roll a four or five, it advances. If it rolls a two or a three, nothing happens. It's wasted, and a one sucks. So let's just roll a damn six. Five's not terrible. So five, we advance it one step. Okay. And now, here, you guys see it. So five, let's do it again. Hey, hot damn, we go into Sizzler. One, two, boom. All right. That was some damn good research, okay? And yes, damn it, we do roll twice for the resources. I forgot, Lars. Damn it. So we roll again, because that was, yeah, that's a good thing for us. I forgot. Uh, so technically, uh, everything is one less. So subtract one from these, except the one will be there. Yeah. Um, so that's really a four, that's a two, and that's a one, right? Well, here, we'll just do this. This is where it was. Okay. Five, three will be a fuel, and one. go and bust out some more research there okay so then these it will have advanced for this turn then I will have done the research done yeah thank you Lars good call um, yeah all right so I don't think we move yet until we can build so I think we wait to do that next turn I'm good with that uh, so that's the end of this turn all of these bad boys go back into the drink. We're going to draw and then we have to reset our events by the way too. All right, more event. All right, so on that note though, so we have all seven of these. These come off the board. Oops. Oops. Okay. There, there, there. All right. So I'm going to shuffle these up. And since y'all are the ones choosing, I don't have to worry about uh, seeing them. It's y'all ca that can't see them. So one, two, three. There's five, six, seven. All right, so we have those ready for the next time we have to do an event. Ready to rock and roll. Okay, so we are at a spawn now for the mutants. Mutants, nothing doing up there, so move on. That's good. More greed. That's not good. All right, so the cyborgs, they don't need technology. Or, yeah, right now, so don't need to worry about them. And it's our turn. Now we only roll once each for our resources. And there's, again, there's three of them, so. 
Uh, dual fours. And a two. That sucks. We get no resources. Because four, four, both of those are filled. And two, both of those are filled. Well, that sucked. Glory to Rome on that. All right, a moment. Okay, sorry, and take care of something. All right, there we go. So now that we get no resources, that sucked. By the way, this is really clever. I love this. I am a huge fan of this. I think, I think Nathan did a really, really good job of this. Yeah, this is just clever. Really, really a big fan. So what do we have here? We can go and throw a base down, a couple of resource uh, search. Um, what order do we want to do this in, y'all? Um, Hmm, I don't know. I am double checking one thing. How about we bust out our, re our, our research, at least one of them first? I think so. So we spend one research All right, so fives and sixes. That's all we care about. We'll do top to bottom. So for our uh, real-time translator, we need a five or a six and it becomes ours. Failed. And in fact, colossal fail. It goes back one. That sucked. All right, now we'll do our targeting. Five or a six is a success. Nothing, nobody doing. However, I don't think we do it, but we do have one more research. We can do the exact same thing again, or, or we can sacrifice this token out of the game, mostly permanently, and just automatically succeed on one. So there's that. Okay. I think we do the other research, though. I think we just take our chances with it. Uh, let's let's go ahead and do the uh, the real time translator first. Choose a different die. <laughs> so real time strat or uh, translator. Nothing happened. A two. Golly. All right. So then our uh, our targeting. We need a five or a six. Uh, nothing. That was, uh, as good as the last research was, that was bad. So, radio. Okay. Well, we can go and establish a base. Because we have two fuel, and we have a, uh, a base. And we had talked about doing that with the cyborgs, right? Um, yeah, the cyborgs. And then let's take a look. Let's take a look at this a little bit closer. These are going to go away because this is our current turn. But right here, we have nothing doing really on the cyborg stuff. So I think I think doing that might not be a terrible idea. Plus, we have the diplomacy there. I think we stay on target with that. So I think we go throw a base out in ASCO. So those two fuel will get spent, and then the build will be to settle a base. So we will take one of the ships and go one, two, there in ASCO. But now the question is, which ship? What do we want more of, y'all? I don't know what the answer is on this. I really don't. Um, I mean, obviously, we're going to get a technology, uh, you know, available to us. We'll get another ship. 
provided we're looking at the top four here. Remember that we need six bases, but I think engine building stuff is going to be good. So do we get more builds or do we get more fuel? Do we get more uh, espionage? Those are, I think, our three options. Here, here, here. I'm leaning towards a build. I could also make a case for the fuel. Hmm. I'm leaning towards builds though. Looks like builds uh, came out more, and I hear you on the espionage. I hear you on that. But we do have one espionage available, but I think we're gonna go ahead and do the build out here uh, in Asgo. So our ship became that, so yay. We are one third of the way to winning the game, theoretically, at least. So we did that, we have those. The ship will now come down there. And we have that bad boy available to us. All right, so now the espionage. Do we want to do use that in any way, shape, or form? Because the espionage, we could sabotage a technology, potentially. No, we're not gonna, we're, we're done, we're just done. Nope, don't wanna mess with that yet. So what do we have? These will come back here. Oops, did I drop one? No, okay, okay. That doesn't look good. Uh, all right, so we have an advance. And this is going to be the, uh, the flesh eaters on the advance. So this is the first time. No, they do not advance. Check that, because we're at Cold War State. That's right. Only if they're at war, right. Okay, so never mind. So because we're up here with them, even though their, their invasion fleet has been built, they're just hanging out. So nothing doing there. That's right. Whew. All right. Yeah, that's not good. All right, so we're going to have a special event or a uh, random event. So pick a number one through seven, y'all. Okay. Five it is, okay, so right there. Five is gonna be some foreign relation action. That's a two, military alliance. Okay, so let's go ahead back to the politics board. All right, that's a six. So who is the six? Now, to be clear, let me go back to this to show you all something. 
where it says Diplomatic Alliance, Military Alliance, and Research Alliance. All that means is you move the marker to the Alliance side. If it's already on the Alliance side, then the first word comes into play and different things will come into play. But as it is, uh, they are now in Alliance, which now means the uh, Chthonians and the Flesh Eaters now share this technology as well. All right? All right. So now there's going to be a greed for the Mercs. And I don't think, I don't think anything happens because they're already pegged out at total war. Because it would be an advance if you were supposed to move it down for anybody but the Mercs. So because it's already at the very bottom, I don't believe anything happens. Oops, that should have flipped. All right, so now we have our, uh, what is that? That is Fast Scout. All right, there is, there is a uh, Fast Scout. No, there's not. I lied. There's no Fast Scout technology out there. So because there's no Fast Scout technology out there, that's just going to be a random event. Cool. All right, so back-to-back -back random events, there and there. So random event number one, pick a number one through six, and pick another number one through five, assuming that, you know, one doesn't affect the other. So there we go. Oh, they still get the bonus advance. Oh, oh, so hold on. So, Nathan, what you're telling me then is this would be a double advance on those because you would get one advance for that plus one for these if it were those factions. Ew, that's gross. So that means the mercs get one more advance. That's why they start at a seven. So they advance to there. Fair enough, Nathan. Thank you. Well done. I appreciate That's why I'm glad you're here. All right. So it looks like two so far for the first number. Looking for the second number. All right. So two for the first one. Get down here. Proficient with the forceps. I am not. Gray's Anatomy. Apparently we need to watch more of it. All right. Oh, for the love of all that's good and holy. All right, we have military. And roll better. Okay, so what do we want? Um, six? <laughs> all right, and the second one would be three, but all right. So five. Military alliance. Okay, so alliance. Let's see what who it's with. And a five with the Mercs. Military Alliance. They're already at that. So if you take a look. So the Mercs, they're already there. So it's going to be an overflow. And because it's a military, both races make an immediate advance, but ignore the war effort. So that's going to be, huh. How does that work? Is it the Mercs and both of them? Okay. So if it's them and them, but it also affects the Mercs. So that would tell me that that would advance. They don't have any ships out. They don't have any ships out. That's going to be it then. Right? I think that's right. You're right. 
You're right, you're right, you're right. It's not here. It has to do with this. Let me back that up. You're right. I got sidetracked. Thank you, Lars. So we look at a five. Sorry. Five. Oop, there we go. No big deal. So now they don't have they don't have any tech yet, so they're not gonna share anything, but that's fine. Thank you. Yep, 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 yep. We're good. I made the mistake. I apologize. All right, so now we are going for number three, it looks like, y'all said. Three is going to be that one. That board is really far. All right. Internal politics now. Oy vey. There we go. All right. Um, literally a five or a six is all we really want. And a six would be great. Uh, that is not that. Expansion desire. Well, that sucks. Okay. Bink. And that resets. So there we go. We are a third of the way to losing the game. <laughs> All right. So that was this event right here. All right. So the, uh, the flesh eaters will, because if you look, they will get a tech. We'll just take the top one off them. And that is going to be a extra advance, I believe is what that is. <laughs> That's not good. Uh, fast advance, all fleets of this faction. Now advance two spaces towards Seoul when resolving the advance result of the activation token. Okay, but here's the good news. The fact, so they get two advances. Every time they advance, they advance two steps, but they're still up here at the Cold War, so they don't advance. They won't advance until they get down to war. So we need to keep them happy, keep them up here. Oh God, the desire doesn't reset. My bad, I thought it did. Do they never reset? I th really thought they did. I mean, I believe you, you're the designer, I'm not gonna argue. I just really thought it did. Yeah. All right. So that was their attack. Aye, vey. Draw. You know, it'd be great, you know, a turn for us. Just saying. That'd be, that'd be just fantastic. All right, so spawn. They do not because, huh, so done. God. All right, so now uh, the cyborgs press. I don't believe they do. There it is. Oh, they do. I apologize. Right there. They do. All fleets of the alien race that are currently in play on a numbered space advance one space towards Seoul. But the cyborgs don't have anybody out right now. Whereas if that were for the flesh eaters, they would advance. But as it is, they're not out there, so they don't. So we don't need to worry about that yet. Does anybody else have this huge impending feeling of doom? 
So theoretically, our chits are in here, right? I mean, somewhere, I mean, I see one right there, right? I see two of them. Okay. All right. So cyborgs, do not get any tech. They're done. Getting a little full over here. Okay. Okay, and then a spawn for the flesh eaters. They do not spawn yet. Phew. Okay. Oh my god, this is terrible. And let me back up to the cyborgs here. So the press, hold on. If none of the race's fleets are in play, this effect instead is treated as a spawn effect. Okay. So here's my question, Nathan. So we're going back to this. This does happen, right? And there's no press because they don't have anybody out right now. Which then says this is treated as a spawn effect. Well, the spawn technically doesn't happen until they're there. So does it still happen like a random event it, that trumps? Or does it not happen because of that? You see what I'm asking here? So, we have a press. If they have ships on the board, they have no ships on the board, so then it becomes a spawn. But the spawn doesn't happen, or does it, because they're not here or lower. I'll wait while you uh, answer me on that one. It still happens. Okay, so they do spawn. Okay. Well, now the cyborgs are on the board. So the far right will then come out to there. And those will slide over. So they're on the board. Um, a little worrisome, just saying. It's a little worrisome. Got it. Okay, a spawn token wouldn't, but since it's a press token, it does. Got it. All right. I'm not worried. You're worried. <clears throat> All right. So the next one now is a galactic conflict. So galactic conflict, we'll go and grab the uh, handy dandy little reference sheet right here. We're going to roll. And that's what's going to happen. Okay. And that, so we'll roll once to figure out what it is. And then the second, unless it's four, for what faction? Okay, so gently put that there. One. Diplomatic Alliance. So let's figure out who that's going to be. So that's going to then move up to up here. That's going to be four. And four, that's going to move on over to there. Not a terrible uh, galactic conflict there. All right. So, okay. But man, talk about having balls in the air right now. I feel like we are somehow on the precipice of things going really sideways. The fact that I can't draw a damn chit doesn't help. So that goes. 
So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So there's going to be 14 turns between ours, at least. Make that 15. Oy vey, Jamil. This is brutal. All right, so it's going to be a war event now. Is anybody currently at war? Nope, everybody's a lot allied up there. So, okay, don't have to worry about that. Um, so, expansion desire then pings out since none of them are at war with one another. Check for any alien races currently at war in the political overview. None of them are. For every alien race that's at war, check the central play area for a base within their territory. Don't have to worry about it. If a base exists, because they're not at war, it doesn't matter. No such base exists. Uh, increase the expansion desire. Is that right? So if that's the case, then... Well, hold on. And that makes sense, Nathan. That's why the chits don't go back in right now. So here's a question. So the alien war event, right there at the bottom, it says, check for any alien races currently at war. For every da 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 right? If a base exists, do this. If there's no such base, do that. But I would argue that since none of them are at war, we don't do any of that. Instead, we just do the random event. I think that makes sense. Is that correct? Because not at war, so therefore don't do anything in that. I think that's how that reads. Or I'm wrong. And because, yeah, I, I, I feel pretty good that it's just a random event. Provided that's the case, pick a number one to four. Nathan, your game is kicking my ass, just so you know. <laughs> I'm having fun with it, but it's kicking my ass. This is brutal. So that would be the war event. Not that one, this one. That goes back. Okay. All right, looks like three. More foreign relations. It's both of those. None of these are good. Just, we'll see what happens. Uh, diplomatic Alliance. Well, let's find out who, uh, who's going to fail here. Uh, or overflow, because they're all at Alliance. Uh, one. Okay, well, that's going to be this one and this one. Diplomatic Alliance, let's see, for the overflow. Move the war effort of both races down one space. So literally all four factions drop one. Really? Really? Glory to Rome. Really? Boop, boop, boop. 
weight. And now we're going to have a contested effect because of our diplomatic relations there, because of our embassy. All right. We roll one die and see what happens. Okay, so, okay. <clears throat> On a five or a six, the token stays there and that doesn't move. That's the ideal situation. On a three or four, the resource token goes away, but it stays there. On a one or a two, this goes away and it drops. The good news is it's not an espionage token, so it's not going to be seen as an act of war. So at least there's that. All right, so could we just get a five or a six here? That'd be great. Yes! All right. So the cyborgs just hang out where they are, and that stays. So hey, a little bit silver lining, a little bit there, okay? All right. This is brutal. All right, so advances. Okay, so there are three advances coming up. Now you'll notice that none of them are down at war. So none of the, I believe, make sure that, hold on, nothing there, nothing there. What I'm doing is I'm looking, let me double check on there, on all of their technologies. The auto respawn Things that affect the Raiders also affect the Fast, uh, an extra advance, but none of them are at war. So if that's the case, then nothing happens, nothing happens, nothing happens. So at least there's that, right? I think it, I, it, somebody can go back and say, see how long it's been, but this has been brutal. Nathan, what's the longest you've gone between turns? I'm curious. So how many do we have? Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen. That's sixteen. Hey, hey! Seventeen turns. Sixteen in between. <laughs> the game's playing itself, right? Oh. Okay. All right, well, hey, at least there's that. That seems reasonable, okay? Whew, all right. So technology does happen for the uh, mutants because here, so we're gonna draw a technology. We don't need to do anything. We, you can see them right there. We'll grab that one. I don't know what that is. Looks like a big nose. It is. Durability enhancements. All fleets now require one additional hit to destroy. Yay. So the number of hits to destroy it is the number that's in the top right hand corner of those. So when the zero comes out, it now costs one hit to destroy it. Hmm. All right, so that's done. And an advance isn't going to happen here. So there's that. And hallelujah. Sorry, we're in space. It's All right, that seems a little bit better. Three in the span of the next five turns. All right.
So there's that. All right. So we get two resource uh, rolls. Two. Remind me. Two of those. What do we have out here? We have one, two, three, four. So we roll four dice twice. I got to remember how to even do this. Uh, so one, two, or six would be great. Okay, one and a six. I'll take that. The threes are wasted, but the one and a six is all right. Um... What do we do? Oh, you know what? That's going to be the six. To open up the third column for us, since we're going to have a turn on back to back, I think that has to be. So we don't waste any more resources. So there's the six. What do we do for the one? I ain't got a damn clue. Um... Gonna need more fuel. So I think we do that. The problem is that locks up for any doubles that we get on the second roll. Let's not do fuel so we can leave two. Uh, let's go and get another build. There we go. So there are two fuel, two build, and four research, and two espionage left. I think that's good. So for our second roll now, uh, the fives are dead, but the sixes are good. So we have two. Huh. We could bust out a couple research right now. Because for combat, we're going to have turn three. I think we do that. I think we go and grab two research. There's a part of me that wants to build mines to slow down their fleets, but none of them are moving yet. So I think we're okay, except for the, uh, the mercs. I think we're okay with that. All right. So that's that. So these will all drop. All right. I think that we've established has to happen. We have no more morale. Well, other than the one that's on the track, but I'm saying it's all tapped out. And the two research, I think we do that, right? Let's keep one of the sixes in there. So we'll do one research to start. And we'll do back to front. So we'll do here, then we'll do here. So first, looking for a four or higher, ideally a six. Hold on, before we do that, hold on, before we do that. Do, do we want to spend, that way it gets a chance to advance? Because if we flip this, We get a roll for it. No, we're not going to. Nope, decided not to. So here we go. Six. Hot damn. There we go. That's a double bump. Boom. Complete. There we go. So that will come over here. And now, just as a reminder for what that is for us, uh, adds one to all espionage contested roll attempts. Okay, so... Uh, to be able to slow down either builds here and other stuff out there on the board. I think that's, I think that's a good thing for us. Um, for war and alliance stuff, as well as the technologies. Yeah, I think so. I think that's great. All right, so now we need a five or a six for our targeting. Uh, that went the wrong way. Mm. 
damn it. All right. But now, now, in hindsight, we probably should have. What do we do with the extra research? So we have a build coming here and one fuel. We can't move a ship far enough yet. Oh God, we desperately need fuel out there. So when we get this, that's got to be fuel. I think we stop there. I think we're done. So that's done. All of these. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. 17 chits go back into the cup. All right, good news, it's our turn again. We have three dice for rolls and we have everything open to us. So hopefully, ideally here, we will get another fuel. So we want a six, a five or a six out of all that. All right, there's a five, that's gotta be a fuel. There, and then we have a one and a three. So that's in third base. I think they're both, uh, there's only one. I don't know what to do with the one. Could try more research or do we go espionage? We have the extra espionage. Let's do that. Uh, you know what? No, we'll keep it there. Done. And that's just a single roll for that. So everything drops now. So now, do we build a ship or do we build a mine? Because a mine basically is a speed bump for the bad guys. And ships carry mines, and then we can they can deploy them. And let me let me go through the uh, the steps on that. Yeah, flagship can carry up to one mine with it. So actually, mines don't get dropped off, do they, Nathan? I just realized that. Or can they? Um... Hey, Milton. Uh, what do we do? What do we do? What do we do? Or... With the build, hold on. Or do we upgrade a base with that build? Okay, they can be dropped off. All right. Hmm. So next turn is going to be a build another base. No, I don't think so. Ah. I think we just build a ship and not overthink it. So that'll put another ship out there. There's the build. Fuel's going to hang out. The research 
What do we do? So we have two turns coming up. We're going to build a bit. I think we wait on the re I think we hold off on all of that and I think we're done. So that's here. All right, so border friction now for the uh, the mutants and this is the point in the game where my brain starts going to mush. So we don't have, we haven't built that base, so nothing happens there, and I should be filling these up. I apologize. And by the way, that should have gone back in there. Okay. All right, so that's done. So here, this is going to be uh, a press for the Chthonians, and I don't think for the press. They have no fleets out. Nope, they spawn instead. Okay, so the Chthonians are out on the board, so that will come out there. But they still won't move yet, but they have a fleet out there now. Okay. Hey, Lincoln. What's up, buddy? All right. So now it's our turn. We have one, two, three. So we roll. Minus one on the roll. Uh, five, three, one. Okay. All we have are these three options to put out there. Five, three, and one. I don't know. I guess that I don't feel great about it. We need fuel. So. We need access to fuel. I think that's got to be the next base then. All right, so that's done. So now we have this. So we have a research and we have dual research coming. So I think we build first, which is going to let us look at two of these. So now the question is, what the hell do we build? We need six bases out. We have two. I think it's got to be the fuel one. It feels like it's got to be the fuel one. Yeah, it's going to be the fuel one. Okay, so it's going to be that base. But then we have two fuel in which to be able to move. And so we have a conundrum here, right? If we put it over here with the, uh, the mutants, actually uh, two fuel, we can't get to that base, to that. If we do it on the mutants, they already have, and they have an auto regenerate. And this is a level uh, strength of one. I think it's got to either be Abraxas or Poiselia. I think it's got to be. They don't have anybody on the board. We're going to bring that out. So we spend the two fuel. That goes away. That will go there. So the two fuel and the build. 
to put out the fuel base. We now have three ships available and that comes over there. I think so. But now that is going to be two steps. Oh God, that puts us at war with them. It's going to put us at war with either one of them. So a moment before we did that, we're going to take the diplomatic and we're going to put it over there first. Then we will have moved and built the base there. I think that's where we go with it. Okay. And now we're going to roll twice. I think that's where we're at. So now that we have, I just want to make sure I get this right. And the diplomatic doesn't help us, or the, our research technology does not help us with that. Okay. So what does this mean? So we're going to roll twice. On a five or a six, it stays there. Everything stays. A three or a four, this goes away, but it stays here. A one or a two, it goes away and it drops. So let's roll high. Okay, so this goes away, but it's just an embassy, so it didn't hurt us. And then for this, since there's nothing left for the second one, because two steps away, that drops one right there. Okay. All right, not the end of the world. So that's our base building. Now we have... One research. We're going to spend that research to not try and get that yet. We're going to take a look at both of those and choose one of those to put on the board. We don't know what either one is, so let's look. We get to look at both. I have a pretty good feeling as to what those are, but... Alright, the top one is Data Disruption Toolkit. Add one to the results of each die in all sabotage technology attempts. So that's going to be really good for killing their, uh, their technology coupled with the one that we already have. The other one, the bottom one, is a mil spec op engine. Once per turn, you can move a flagship or ally ship without spending fuel. Where the hell was that earlier? So, it's a free move. I think that the latter is probably going to be the better idea. I feel pretty good, but I think a free move once per turn seems like a good idea. Uh, as opposed to being able to blow up their technologies, because we still got a long way, I think, for those to fill. I think so. What do you all say? Espionage or movement? I think the movement. While you all decide, that's the end of our turn. So these will go back into the cup. And that, was a, that was a good series of turns, I think. And it put us another base out there, so that's good. Hey, Kushigra, what's up? Okay. All right, so the advance, they do not advance. I got to remember what that one was, too, a moment. The spawn and one additional hit, right. 
Okay. Yep, all right, y'all agree with the movement idea. So that will flip over. This will come onto the board there. All right, done. So nothing happens there. Greed, it's already maxed out, but they do get a movement. So that will drop to there because the movement at total war. They're done, we'll draw two. Yeah, how's your family, Kushigra? Be safe. Yuck. All right. So the next one is expansion. That seems bad for us. Yep. It is. That drops. One more and we die. So desire or stability that drops. So expansion, this pings, and it, therefore that drops. Oh boy. That's terrible. Oh boy. All right, so where are we? Maybe we should go with the easy level for today's game. Uh, the board of friction. <laughs> uh, if we have a base in their area, they do, we do. Uh, you must lower the war effort for this alien race by one. Okay, well, so because we have a base there, and this will happen, so we're gonna roll for that. So five or six, we're good. Three or four, it stays, but the diplom the embassy dies. One or two is terrible. All right, the embassy died, but it stayed from that. All right, so that's done. Oh, come on, man. Uh, so here, do we have a base in their area? We do not, so nothing happens on the board of friction because we don't have a base out here in yellow. So there's that at least. Hmm. Uh, all right, so advance. Do not do an advance and I don't think there's anything else with a standard advance. Nope, because not at war. So those two get skipped because they're at mobilize, but not at war. Oh, good call. You're right. You're right, you're right, you're right. Okay, let's go back to that earlier. When I settled the base, that should have reset. So in other words, that will have pushed that up to there and it won't have pushed that. Good call. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Yep, I see it. A little slow, but I got there. Thank you. In theory, we have chits in there. Uh, all right, they're definitely getting a tech. So now, uh, just like, no, not just like a moment. I got to see what that one is. What's their technology here? That one is fast raiders, right? Yeah. Uh, unlocks fast raiders for this faction. Oh, so they have that tech now. Yeah, 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 I gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. All right, well, fast scout now goes, and I don't think anybody has that out. They don't. So the fast scout tech is not out, so therefore, it's a random event. 
So this will be a random event. Pick a number one through three. One, two, or three. This one will have been face up. Oh, God. That one is not. Okay. Oh, yeah. Sorry. That should be over there. Other end. Yep. <sighs> Getting tense over here. We are halfway. We have four bases out, right? One, two, three. Nope. Nope. Three bases. So we're halfway. Oof. All right, Rocky, let's do two. That's going to be technology. Uh, six would be great. Just six. That's all I want. Six. That is not a six. Uh, research alliance. Everything is at alliance, so we're going to roll. And it's a two, and the two will be this one and this one. And what is the Research Alliance overflow? Uh, both gain a tech. So all four gain a tech. Yay. Oh, man, this is brutal. Because two and two, so those two and those two. Eh, you get, I feel like Oprah. Giving away alien tech. You get a tech. You get a tech. All right. So that one is the same there. That is that one. Oh, God. This is getting ugly. U-G-L-Y. You ain't got no alibi. You ugly. Oof. There... That's a new one. So what all do they have here? They have advanced defensive systems. So let's see. This one removes a die from us for uh, whenever we have to roll against them. This, uh, what else? Raider protocols, and we got fast raiders out there as well as fast scouts now. All of that. Horrible. All right. That was a fun event. You're right. No tech for the mercs. You're right, because these get them not there. Good call. Good call. Good call. Good call. You're right. All right. Well, hey. Not quite Oprah E, but. Uh, next, we have. Fast Raider. Okay, so now we do have the Fast Raider out there. So, any that have this tech. So, who has it? No. Yes. Yes, yes. So those three factions, so the Mercs, the Mutants, and the Flesh Eaters all have the Fast Raider tech. For each alien race that has it, advance their Raider fleet towards Seoul. The Raider fleet is their two level. Not out, not out, not out. If they have the tech, but the Raider fleet is still in the spawn order track, spawn the Raider fleet. There's no stacking limits, so that will come out there. Oh, awesome. Look at this, because they're both Raiders. They both come out. Oh, that's exciting. <clears throat> and there. 
Oh, this is, this is awesome. That was, that was fantastic. Yeah, glory to Rome. Oh, this is not going well. And you're right. And they all share the six tech. Well, the allied ones share six, but none of those are in the sixes. Oh, they are. So, wait, there, that's not in a six. But the Mercs aren't aligned, they're not in alliance with them. Correct? So if that's the case, then that's it. Yeah, good call, Nathan, I'm glad you pointed it out. So no, that's right, that's good, okay. Oh, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen. We're we're at fifteen between turns for sure. Uh, all right. So the cyborgs are still pretty happy with us. They're uh, that's not happening. So okay. Our chits are in here, right? I mean, somewhere. In theory. All right, so tech. Uh, looks like the uh, Chthonians are getting tech. So, okay. That one is... That's for them. Force Pursuit. Your flagships and ally ships must pursue uh, any defeated alien fleets of this faction that retreat more than one space are not destroyed. Okay, so we have to follow them. Okay, well, that doesn't seem horrible yet. It probably is, but I'm just saying it doesn't seem horrible. But the fact that it's their third tech, tech's filling up awfully quickly, and really, like, maybe? That'd be awesome. Okay. So we have press for the uh, Chthonians. All fleets, Chthonians are on the board. Currently in play on a numbered space, advance one towards Seoul. That's what that is. Okay? So, whoop, there. That's it. Okay. That's all. That one goes. Hey! We get a turn. There we go. Low focus. Uh, Alright, so the mutants are going to get a tech, because there. That is their fourth tech. We get one less die when fighting them. This is getting better. For those scoring at home, that's sarcasm. No, you really you, you want to be on the uh, you want to you want to go against me. I, I am the human cooler when it comes to craps. Casino should hire me. I'm so bad at rolling dice, shooting dice. Uh, all right, so. Now we are up to an advance for the uh, for the flesh eaters, but they do not advance because not yet. And make sure that they don't have anything. Nope, nothing. So that just doesn't happen. All 
All right, good. Whew. So next is going to be border friction with the, uh, with the flesh eaters here. If I have a base, and I do, within them, lower their uh, war effort by one. So we have a base here. Flesh eaters. We are now at war with them. One or a two for the event, y'all. One or a two. And then it's our turn. Seriously, some barbecue, Joshua? Yeah, for the flesh eaters? That'd be good. That'd be really good. All right. All right, looks like one it is. I think... One is military, and that is military, and the other one will be economy. Okay. Uh, a free build to be good? That is not that. It <laughs> Spawn or advance all invasion fleets. Okay. There. Uh, oh, this is fun. So their invasion fleet is there, and they have a double advance. So that's going to be a one, two. So that's that side. The mercs don't have any. So there's that. So this will come in there. And finally, um, those will go there. There we go. That's awesome. Ouch. Okay. Okay. Our turn. We get one roll, four, one, two, three, four, five dice. Anything but sixes, because sixes are full. Oof, that hurts. Um, Four, two, one, one. I have no idea what we need to do at this point. Four, two, one, one. I mean, we're going to ha I just get all our ships out. We're going to have to slow down technology. But see, this isn't helping us win. We have to build. We have to be able to move to build. So you know what? Four, two, and double fuel. I don't think this is necessarily the right way to do this, but desperation at this point. All right, so those drop.
Okay, so we have that. So what the hell can we do with our morale at this point? Because morale is waning, I feel like. What do you think? <laughs> uh, so we can, we can spend it to lower that or to boost that. There's that. Okay. Um... And the other thing is we can always, anytime we sacrifice something, if we sacrifice this, we can bring the sacrificed resource back into the pool. So honestly, right now, I think we bank it because it, it moves expansion desire or military losses down by one. Right. So it resets this, but I think we're going to need it. So I think we just, we bank that for now. And then the research... We just research with it. We roll on both of them. I think that's how it's got to be. So those two will go up there. All right. So we'll start with the one furthest ahead. One die each. Looking for, looking for a six. It's a five. That advances one. That's good. And then here, four, five, or six. Uh, nope, that's a single jump there. And now we'll roll for this one first. For the second one, that's ah, a six. That's a shame, but that's a double. And then here, we need a five or a six. Nope, and nothing. All right. So now, though, we do have an espionage. Now might be a good time to bust that out. So our espionage that we have here, what can we use for that? We can spend it to get rid of a alien tech, potentially. Um, or to keep it from getting an alien tech. Honestly, I think we spend it to try and get rid of one of those. The other thing we can do for is we can keep it to be able to re-roll dice. I think we bank it. Never mind. I don't think I don't I think we bank it. Never mind. We're done. That's our turn. So since that's our turn, here and all of these go back into the kitty. Advance. And yeah, maybe that's a good point as far as up here, get them out of the alliances. Uh, it doesn't, uh, we need, um, that would be the diplomatic attache. That's actually a good point. Given what we know, I wouldn't know which one to put it on. So I think we, no, I think we'd bank it. I think we'd bank it. All right. So we are, uh, spawning for the, uh, Spawning for the mutants, that is happening. So the last one, well, actually, y'all can see that. So all of those are now out for them. Done. And then it's our turn. All right. So two rolls, and we get four each. Double sixes, a five is wasted, and a one. So we need three bases, right?
we get a lot of turns till that happens. If we were, hold on, that's three, three, that's four fuel. That's one, but we only have one ship and we have to build with the other. And we have two fuel for that. So we don't need builds necessarily. Although, you know what? A couple builds would help us protect. Yeah, never mind. The sixes will be two builds. The five's wasted and then the one. What the hell do we do with the one? Another build? Put the last one out? I think so. There. All right, now we get another set of rolls. Triple fours. Um, well, the only thing that we can do three of, and that makes sense, is going to be research. And the three help us out with a little diplomatic action there, I think so. That seems not terrible. So there, there. All right. I think the two builds have got to be ships or a ship in a mine or an upgrade. Uh, I oh. I have no idea. Um, one's got to be a ship. Oh, you know what? Hold on one second. We can forward deploy. This might be the time to do it. Uh, sacrifice a build to place a flagship or a mine onto a space adjacent to an already built flagship or settled base. So what I'm wondering is do we go ahead and put a uh, sacrifice the other build to put a ship out here? Since that's the closest thing that's to maybe? Yeah, let's do it. So this other one is out of the game. And we put the other ship right there. And that was adjacent to it. Oh, hold on. Not where it is, it's adjacent. Damn it. <sighs> well, hold on. If that's not going to help us protect it, Then never mind. We'll just build it normal. Right there. There we go. Uh, yeah, I would recommend easy for your first game. I think that's a, a solid, solid uh, plan. We have a fuel, and I think we're going to bank it for now. Yeah, we're done. So these will go back into the cup. Whew. It looks so good early. Whew. 
All right, border friction for the mutants, that is going to happen. So they are going to advance one spot, one step. Sorry, no, lower the war effort, wrong, I misspoke. We're now at war with them. Oof. All right, now with the uh, flesh eaters, that's gonna be a press. All their ships advance one space towards Seoul. So that would be, let's see. So this is here, so that will come there and then that will go there. Okay, done. There's a turn at least. Uh, that's gonna be an advance. So the advance, pretty simple, moves in next lower space. And there's going to be our first combat. So that will go there. That's going to go there. And that's going to go there. All right. We have our first combat. All right. A moment. Let's get to that page. Here we go. All right. Okay. So our combat is going to start off with, uh, they, oh wait, they get a second advance. <whistles> so a moment, that advance will go there. Oh, back up. Back up, they had a double advance. So we're gonna back this up. So during their press, pre no, never mind. no, this is fine. So that will go there and that, yeah, that, now we're gonna have combat, all right. Oh, and here's a note. Although some alien texts can allow the fleets to move multiple spaces in a single advance, because all advances triggered by activation tokens happen before combat, a single fleet will only trigger combat once, no matter how many times it moves during a single advance. So, because this fleet was here, and it has the second advance, so that actually is going to go to Seoul, I would argue. All right. So, we begin... Let's... let's uh, you know what? Here. Here we go. We begin with five dice for combat. Okay? Then remove dice equal to the single highest combat value of the alien fleets in the battle. There are three. We remove three. Remove an additional die for every other alien fleet in the same space. Well, that's it, so just that, okay? Then add one die for every cross sword in the same space. One, two, three. Add one die for each triple sword in the same space or an adjacent space. Well, one, well, there, actually there's four, so one, two, three, four, and then one, two, three. The key, you can only have five dice, okay? Roll with the number of dice, the max you can have is five. For every five or higher is a hit. Apply a hit to alien fleets for every hit. Retreat all alien fleets in combat one space away from the space in which the combat took place. All hits are applied to every alien fleet uh, involved in combat. So if I if this were the roll, I would hit four, and if there were two ships there, I would hit both for four. Okay. 
Um, if the number of hits exceeds the combat value of the alien fleet, then it's destroyed. So we need four hits. Hmm. And they do not have an auto respawn, whereas the mutants do. Okay. All right. So we need to have at least one hit. And we don't have any technology that helps us with this. So here we go. So we need at least one hit. I would like four, five or higher. Here we go. Yahtzee. That'll do, pig. That'll do. You ain't got to go home. Yeah, you do. You got to get the hell out of here. You dead. That was wasteful, though. That was overkill. I, but I, I'm not complaining. I'm just saying that was overkill. Don't mess with Earth. That'll do, pig. That'll do. What? <laughs> all right. Hey, they showed up when they had to, all right? All right, so we have an advance for the uh, Chthonians, and they are not advancing, because, so, done. Come in peace, shoot to kill, shoot to kill, shoot to kill. Oh, right, yeah. I forgot. A moment. Thank you, Nathan, for that bit of sunshine. Um, if any alien fleets are destroyed, move the war effort of that race by one down. Yeah, there we go. To keep that in mind. Thank you. Yep. 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 All right. So we have a fast scout now. So the fast scout, let's take a look. Who has the fast scout out here? The fast scout. Nobody. Oh, it was going to be here, but nobody has it. Oh, nobody has the fast scout. All right. So uh, it's going to be a random event. And y'all don't have to do anything, because it's going to be this one. Uh, six would be sexy. And here's a question, Nathan, if it is. If I roll a six, which, unlikely. But if I were to, do I get to take uh, those resources? Oh, I would just lose a re Not a six. Don't want a six. In fact, I don't want to roll. How's that? No, six is fine. Uh, four. Spend a maneuver. So fuel. Spend one fuel. Oh, that sucks. So bad. Glory to Rome. Because there goes a build. Damn it. There goes a base. Damn it. That hurt. <sighs> well, that's all seven events. <sighs> Not pleased. There we go. Five, two. There we go. All right. Grr. Uh, all right. <laughs> so that's going to be a double advance now for the Chthonians. Uh, they only have one, so that's going to go one, two. We're going to fight. We're going to have five dice again, because it's going to be five minus two plus all of that. It's going to get back to five. 
So we need two hits. That'd be great. Five or si fives and sixes. That'll work. He did. Now, that would cause this to go up one more, which means in advance. However, they don't have any ships out there. So they're done. So at least there's that. No flesh eating for you tonight. <laughs> Not getting cocky, just saying. Okay. Does it stop? Oh, well then I screwed up on the last fight then, Nathan. All right, back it up. The good news, the good news, even though I screwed it up, so Nathan saying that when it hits this, they will have stopped there. The fleet would have stopped last time as well, but here's the good news, is that would have activated a die, and then all these triple would have got the die back, so it still would have worked because for adjacent space, so I still would have rolled the same amount. And here, it would have been five minus two, Make sure I get that. And then still would have died here. Yeah, it would have gotten all three of those back, so it still works out. Only raiders move on to planets. Oh. Oh, my bad. Okay. But it still ends up working out the same, so it would have stopped there, but he still dies. Thank you. Oh, would have gone. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Oh, I see what you're saying. The invasion fleet would have gone from here to there to there. So that actually worked out. And then here. So it still works out. Okay. Thanks for the correction. I appreciate that. And now it's our turn. So, how many bases do we have out there? We have three, so that's four. Four dice, minus one on the rolls. So, five, three, two, one. Five, three, right? Yeah. Well, that, that, that was a perfect roll. Wow. That seems unlikely. Okay, so uh, the five has to be that. The three, two, one, because they're all minus one, that's why, because of the chit. Uh, three. Two. No. Nope. One. There. Done. All right. Everything advances. Huh. Why are those there? I'm a, okay, those should be in the cup. Good catch. I don't know why that happened. All right. Well, we only have one fuel now. Um, thwarts our plans, let me tell you. I don't know what to do at this point. Uh, we could build the fourth ship and then move something. No, we can't move it. No. Yeah, I guess we could move it. Yeah, you know what? Let's do that. If we build one ship or... Mm, hold on. Move, move, build base. And then we have move, 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 build base. 
So I have one extra. Or, oh, we could build the adjacent to Sol. Spend that fuel and then build a base. It leaves us pretty vulnerable, though, if we do that. But what the hell, let's do it. Yeah, let's do it. Um, all right, so we're going to spend or uh, sacrifice that out of the game to build this ship adjacent to Seoul. There. Then we're going to spend the fuel to maneuver, and we're going to spend the build to build a base. Maneuver to uh, Apclore. And then that is going to become what base? Uh, I did say it was going to make us vulnerable, so why don't we build the base that's going to help us help ourselves? I think that makes sense. Yeah, I like that. So these will come out, and that will come out. Wrong one. There. And this will go there. That's four bases. It doesn't help with generating resources, but I don't think it needs to. It just needs to protect itself. So it's going to be two dice. Yeah, I think so. And now... What do we do? I think we, I think we leave it at that. We could put the espionage here to slow their research, but I don't think we need to yet. No, I think we're good. Have a good one, Lars. Thanks for helping. Uh, thanks for hanging out and helping also. Yeah, I think we're done. I think so. Oh, all these go back in. Okay, so uh, we have a spawn for the mercs, but they have nothing to spawn. So if they have nothing to spawn, Uh, it's, it's a tech effect instead, so they get a tech for that. So they're going to get that. All right, done. So the uh, Chthonians are going to get a tech. I may have misspoke earlier. Uh, that looks like a... Uh, espionage minus one against me whenever I do that.
Uh, wrong. There we go. Yep, that's exactly what it is. So that basically offsets what that would have been there. Yeah, I need to get them warring at each other. You're right. So hold on one second. One other thing we would have done is that. On our turn. I think that's good. All right. All right, so spawning here. Okay, that is a fast raider for everybody. All right, I feel like everybody's got the fast raider one. Yes. No, not in six either. Yes, yes, and no. Okay. So if they have the fast raider, advance their raider fleet one towards Seoul. So here, nope. So it spawns their fast raider instead. So there, they don't have. They advance their raider one towards Seoul. Both of those advance to there. The yes. So all of the, uh, their raider, sorry, advances towards Seoul. And they don't have it. Okay. Done. So that is the fast raider. That's here. Oh, damn it. You're right. They shouldn't have spawned. Which one came out? I believe it was there. Yeah. All right. So there. That will go back there. Thank you, Nate. Thin. Oof. All right. So press for the mutants. So they will advance. And that is everybody's going to advance on for them, right? For the press. Yep. So that will go there, and they will go there. Okay. Done. Uh, they will spawn, uh, I'm sorry, they will advance, I apologize, uh, and they will advance twice, because there. So, this, they are not there, and we'll go to there, and then one, two. Okay? So that was here. All right, Fast Scout Tech. Does anybody have that out? Nobody has it. Somehow, I don't know how they don't have it at this point, but they don't. So it's a random event. All right, so pick a number, one through seven, y'all. You know what? It's getting late. I'm going to do it. We'll just go seven. All right. Tech. Hey, there we go. Advance uh, one research, 25%. Fuel or fight? Fuel or fight? Fuel or fight? Feel like there's a lot of battles coming. So, ah, I don't know which one.
A ship gets to move one spot every... Yeah, we're going to do that every turn. Oh, ah, damn it. I don't know. Or all fours hit. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna do the modified hit. We're gonna do this. So that's just a plus one. Uh, so I hit on fours, fives, and sixes now. I think that's just too valuable to not with all those ships out there. I think we have to. So that was a great result there. Fuel will let you sneak in front of Victor. Ah, we are four, five, six. There's the builds right there, but we have enough fuel to do it without, I think, right? Four. So let's look. One, two, three, four, five. Damn it. I think we have to hit him back first. I think I, I think we stick with it. Random event. I think we stick with it. But I hear you, Rocky. I need that other fuel up here. But it's not going to happen. For worst comes the worst, we theoretically can win right here by getting rid of one of these builds to build a ship here and that costs us one less fuel so i think so the game's probably not going past here is my guess my guess but random event we're gonna go with three sideways three uh well there's that all right hold on happen here there we go a one is uh, expansion desire Bloop. ping well at least the internal politics is done so there's that okay what happened here it's like the camera I think the camera's getting tired. I apologize. All right. So there's that. I need to draw. Hold on. But I have to draw our chits. That's the problem. And the way I'm rolling, or drawing, not looking good. All right. So the Mercs advance. The fact that I have all my ships out there helps. Um, so the Mercs advance... A single advance, so there and there, done. We draw. Oh God. Uh, expansion. Oh. Uh, okay. So that expansion says, move the expansion desire. So if I, that moves, we lose. Is there a way, there's a way to stop that, isn't there? Oh God, I don't think there is. I think we just lost. Am I right? I think so. I think Nathan just jinxed us. <laughs> because the only resource... I don't have a maneuver, a maneuver, a fuel to, to sacrifice. I don't have one. Yeah, no, there you go. Um, 
So, here, here's, here's an important lesson. If, if, on our turn, you can sacrifice a maneuver, if you have a maneuver, if you have a fuel stored up, you can sacrifice one to move an activation token from the activation queue. So in other words, I don't like this event. I can discard a fuel and that goes away. It goes over to here and then you draw three others, choose one of them to fill in here and then continue, but sacrifice meaning remove from the game. Um, so, bink! Our stability. People are too pissed off that we didn't expand enough and we lose. Ah! Glory to Rome. So the overhit. And we killed ourselves. Our own people killed us due to lack of stability. I don't know if I did. I don't... Oh, God. Wait, did I? Did I... Mm. Did I reset this? I don't think... I don't think I did. So maybe we didn't lose. A moment. When I built this base, I don't think I reset that. So then that will go there. So we continue. Check that. Wow, yeah, the camera's just jacking up right now. I apologize. All right, so we continue. You're right. Thank you, Nathan. But we still have to draw our own chits, and I can't seem to do this. Uh, they do not. Somehow, us and the cyborgs, we're just chilling. So, nothing. I can't draw our chits. Hey, Jess. Yep. Oh, wait. Let's reset that there then. Okay. Um, all right. So spawn. There isn't a spawn. They're all out. Uh, Treat it as a tech. Okay. So their last tech will go out. And there are the scouts. And then... If there's a tech, but it's full, it's then treated as an, uh, an advance. Okay. The reason this comes up is we just did that for that one. But now, because their tech is full, it's going to be an advance. Oh, my God. I cannot really. Can I? They're in here, in theory, like five of them. All right. So this is going to be an advance. So this advance will go one there. They don't have a double. That will go there and done. Okay. <sighs> Not us. All right. So then we have... An oppress that they will do. So the press will not come towards. The press will not attack, will not initiate combat. So they will just po uh, uh, flex over there. And that does happen. It really is just wanting to go wherever it wants to go now. Okay. There we go. All right, so that is done. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 13, 14. This 15, 16, 17, 18. There's a new record for us. Minimum 18. That'll be 19. Uh, all right, so they can't spawn. That'll be a tech for them. 
Uh, that doesn't look good. Stolen mutant tech. It's a duplicate of whatever tech the mutants have in the sixth space. So that's going to be a uh, regenerate for them now. Awesome. Not really. Moving on. So that goes there. Finally, there's something for us. That's going to be a press for the Chthonians. And they will move there, and they will move there. Okay. Would like to draw another one of ours. That'd be great. Nope, just kidding. Uh, in advance, doesn't happen for them since they're there. Golly. Greed for them is going to be in advance. So there, that's going to die. And then there, provided I hit them. We, they don't lose any dice, so that's going to be, uh, it auto-regenerates, but I get five dice, and I hit on fours and five, fours and higher. <laughs> that was close, so that auto-regenerates and goes back into seven, right there. Get that out of our system. That goes away. Slide. This is horrible chip pulling. Uh, the Chthonians, border friction. If we have a base in their area, we do not. So no base, nothing happens for that. Oh God, you're right. I killed a Merc, so this actually goes up that way because they get scared of us. Finally, finally. There are, there are others. See? You see one right there? So... Nope. Alright. So we have one, two, three, no. We have three bases plus that, so we're getting four dice resources twice. One, two, three, four. Literally the only spots that could fill. So at least there's that. Fuel. Build. Diplomacy, diplomacy. I don't think it's going to matter, but that's it. Now, ones and twos are all that matter. There's a one and a two. So we'll do one and a two. And then we advance everything. All right. Um, to get rid of a chit that we don't like. We'll hold on to that. Uh, I think we use the espionage to kill something here. And... Make sure I get this right.
Yeah. So we roll one die, and as long as it's a two or higher, we kill something. Uh, oh, that's probably a good point, huh? That would have been good earlier, but nope, we're good. Oh, right. We're going to spend the propaganda. In fact, we will sacrifice it, right? No. We'll spend that to bump that up one. Done. So here, we will roll, and whatever we roll, we're going to kill that number, that, uh, there you go, two through six, it's a five, and everything else slides down. And that spends the espionage. And then we have three research. And we have... We're going to, uh, let me get the term right, we're going to focus research, sacrifice this out of the game, and that's 100%. It's an auto get. So now we get to move one ship without fuel every turn. We will move that ship down here. Done. That works. Uh, and we'll bank the research. Because that one wasn't super helpful for us, so I think we're done. I think that works. Alright. So unfortunately... This and all of those go back in, I mean, like, it's just hard to find our chits in here. Just, so all of these. All right. So we need three chits and the game's over. <laughs> okay, there's one. I'll take it. All right, so now the, uh, the flesh eaters are going to advance. So what do we have? Uh, that. And it's a double advance because of that. Done. There's going to be another galactic conflict. So the galactic conflict, we will roll. It's a five. So that's going to be war with three up here. So I believe that moves over. Let me double check. That's done. There's the galactic conflict. Okay, there's two. Yes, I want a war. I, I'm fully aware. Uh, and then we have the mutants advance. One, one, and it's only a single advance, so that's that. Okay, so we have a chance. 
That was a hell of a good pull right there. All right, so the Chthonians have an advance, but they do not. Done. Game should end there. Should. All right. So we get four dice, minus one on the rolls. Uh, so five, four, three, and zero. So we get no resources. Okay. Okay. Everything else drops. All right, so what do we have? We have three researches. Eh. The diplomatic. I think we're going to put that under the Chthonians. I think so. So we'll build an embassy with the Chthonians, I think is what we're going to end up doing. Yeah, I think so. So we'll spend this there with the Chthonians. Or, yeah, I think that's what we'll do. We have two fuels. And we'll go one, two, there. That spends that fuel and that fuel. And we have three research. I think we hold, we bank the research. That's fine. And we're done. So all of these go back in. The Mercs advance. It's only a single advance, though, because they're now up there. So they will advance to there. And that will advance to there and nothing else. Okay, done. That should do it, I think. All right. So now, uh, resource minus one, so roll four dice, and the free move from tech. Oh, for me, for me, for me, gotcha, right. Um, and the free move will go to there. There we go. Cool, right, thank you. All right, so. That's minus one on these, so it's a four, three, two, one. So here, 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 we'll go there, there, and there. Done. These drop. All right, so we have a build and three fuel, one fuel and a build. And let's go and get the espionage base out here. And that is going to piss them off. And that is one, two, three steps away. One, two, three. We are now at war with the cyborgs because three steps away there. We have two fuel left. We're going to just hold on to it, and we're done. These go back into the kitty. Slide.
Roll for resources, I think it's a cow's opinion, but we roll twice. So double sixes, everything's full, three and one. We'll just go build there, do it again. Uh, one, two, three, and that's it. So that'll be there, oops, there, and that's that. Everything drops. We have a build. That'll be our sixth base. And that'll go there. So, that is one, two, three, four, five, six, game over. Whoo! From the brink, from the brink. Whoo! All right, we won. Good job, team us. Earthlings, well done. All right, so I'm gonna start with the negatives on this, okay? Um, yeah, I don't like the rule book at all, uh, I, and the game desperately needs a player aid. Now, I will say this. This is helpful for all the um, uh, symbols. I hate having to reference this, and I'm not super good memory-wise on that, and also the, oh, if not this, then that. That's the thing that I think needs the player aid, is the if not, if you can't do this, then do this, and if you can't do that, then do this. I hate having to reference that. Um, a lot of typos and a lot of mistakes in the rule book, as well as having to manually change all of those. So there's the downside, okay? Um, on the flip side now, let's, let's go over. I love this mechanism, first off. The resource track and the way that works, I think this is genius, this is fantastic. Believe it or not, even though it felt hopeless at times, the activation cue and the way that works with this, I love this as well. Even though it can be maddening and super frustrating at times when you go 18 turns between your turns, it's it seems really, really just like a lost cause, but it works, and it works really, really well. Um, I think that's just really, really, these two together is fantastic. I like the way the random uh, events work. The fact that you have seven chits between them, right, between the, uh, the, the five different things, but rolling a die to figure out what within that so what is that? That's six times, uh, sorry, hold on, six times five. There are 30 different random events that can come up uh, based on the die rolls and everything. I, I think that's fantastic. And you feel really good early. You feel constant pressure, like, at the mid-game. Uh, and really, the only, the only thing that I will say doesn't feel great necessarily is the research being tied to, oh, I really need this, oh, it went backwards. But you can always discard one of the research to get a guaranteed jump like what I did. So I think that actually, even though I wasn't super keen on that, I think that worked really well. And the activation cue, the way that works to randomize you don't know what opponent, wh which of your enemies is going to do something. You don't know what they're going to do. You can see the cue for a couple of things that they're going to do. But overall, I think it works really well. Um, yeah. And it's fiddly because I didn't have, I had to keep referencing the rule book and I don't have the memory to keep it all clear. Plus, I'm trying to make sure that I'm running the stream and all. I, I don't have the bandwidth up here to keep everything straight. 
you all might not have that problem and you might not be in desperate need of the player aid. The, you know, if not this, then this, and if not that, then that. Um, that might not be a big deal for you all since you're not streaming this. Um, but for me, that is a huge issue with it. But outside of that one thing, uh, I think it, I think it's fantastic. I really enjoyed that. It was tense. I mean, six glory to realms on a solo stream yet came back from the brink. I mean, that's, that's what you want in this type of states of siege or, or tower defense game, I would think. So if, if you're wanting this type of game, I think this does it really, really well. So well done to Nathan and, uh, and Lock and Load for publishing it. Just the attention to detail is a little frustrating on the, 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 the things that are wrong. The chits, I don't have a problem putting stickers on those. That's fine. But I hate having, and I mean, GMT is guilty of it too. And GMT is a way bigger company. So I hear you. Don't get me wrong. I'm not harping on just Lock and Load for that. Just come on, guys, right? Um, but yeah, Nathan says, hey, I'll definitely make a player aid. I think that... I think that will go a huge step for everybody to where I don't want to have to reference this step in the rule book, which then reference this step in the rule book, which then might reference that step. That's just, it breaks them it breaks up the flow of the game. And that, that's, that's really my only complaint to it. Um, plus being able to have like, I made up my little cheat sheet here of, okay, when you sacrifice, you can do these depending on which chit. Like having that stuff easy on a player aid is really nice. And okay, full disclosure, I wasn't able to memorize which, which uh, faction was what, so I just color coded my little notes to help me out with that. But overall, I will say really, really well done, uh, Nathan. That was a lot of fun. It was tense, it was enjoyable, it was stressful which is what you want from a solo game like this that isn't uh, a point generator, right? I'm not up against, I'm, I'm trying to get to certain victory conditions and I think it was just really well done. So, kudos. All right. Um, there you go. All right. Uh, let's see, anything else? Yeah, I, uh, thanks again to, uh, to Nathan for sending me a copy of this so we could stream it. It came as a surprise, and it was a very pleasant surprise. Really enjoyed that. That was a good experience. So if you all uh, are interested, check it out. Lock and Load uh, has copies, I imagine. And there was a place early in the stream, uh, somebody had mentioned where they're available over in Europe. And past that, I don't know, so I apologize. Um, yeah, there you go. Oh, Hexa Sim has it in stock. Uh, Malwinia says uh, if for Europeans. Don't know about Asia or Australia. I apologize. But yeah, there you go. Good stuff. So thanks everybody for hanging out. Really enjoy it. Big thanks to Nathan for sticking it out with us today. That was that was cool to have you in chat. Glad you enjoyed it as well. Uh, if you all enjoyed it, then subscribe, like, hit the bell notification. Consider supporting the show over on patreon.com forward slash HCHQ. Certainly would appreciate the support. If you think it's worth the entertainment value the, or, or the value on helping you make informed decisions on whether or not games are going to be a good fit for you and your game group, certainly would appreciate uh, you consider supporting the show over on patreon.com forward slash HCHQ. Uh, yeah, that's it. We'll be back tomorrow. I believe we're doing Mandala Stones. Jess and I are, so be back tomorrow night. But with that said, I have a dog to go take for a walk. And it smells like clean up a mess downstairs, but eh, it happens. Not his fault. All right. Y'all have a great rest of your evening. Wear your masks. Social distance. Be kind to one another. We'll see y'all tomorrow night. All right. Take care, everybody. Thanks. Earth. Earth. Or I guess soul. Soul. You know, I feel like we need to come up with a chant for soul being victorious. Ha ha. Well done, y'all. Well done, the herd and peanut gallery. <laughs>